ABC Sports presents the 1980 National League Championship Series. The Eastern Champion Philadelphia Phillies and the Western Champion Houston Astros. Unusual, uncommon, unprecedented, unbelievable, incredible, astonishing. That was game four. Arguments, protests, conferences, change decisions, and just plain old mistakes. All marked game four. An admitted gamble by Pete Rose led Philadelphia to a life-giving 5-3 win. Now one game for the National League pennant. Game five from the Astrodome in Houston, Texas, and this ABC Sports exclusive is brought to you by Chevrolet and your Chevy dealer with Chevette Monza Citation and the new Monte Carlo. Chevy's up ahead for 1981. And by Pepsi Cola and your local Pepsi Cola butler who invite you to catch that Pepsi spirit. The results of the first four games of the National League Championship Series. First two played in Philadelphia. Phillies won the opener three to one. Astros took the second seven to four in ten innings. The series moved to Houston. Astros won one nothing eleven innings. Phillies won yesterday five three in ten innings. And for the third time in twelve years the National League Championship Series will go the limit. Five games. Good evening ladies and gentlemen. I'm Keith Jackson and welcome to a few hours of excitement from Houston Texas the starting pitchers for tonight's final game in the National League season of 1980 the veteran Nolan Ryan on the mound for the Astros he pitched six and a third innings in the second game in Philadelphia a game won by the Astros seven to four Ryan tonight for Houston for the Philadelphia Phillies it will be a rookie right hander who was not even on the big club until the first of September Marty Bystrom won five games for them he became eligible for the championship series when Neil Nino Espinosa, another pitcher, was disabled. In game four yesterday, it took virtually the entire judiciary of the National League to handle all the problems that arose in the fourth inning. <laughs> it began to look for a time as if it might never really come to an end. And certainly there didn't seem any other moment in the game that could come up that could match that fourth inning in drama. But Lord knows both teams and all the people involved sure tried. Let's recall some of those moments and begin with that dramatic fourth inning. McBride and Trio on second and first after successful singles. Gary Maddox hits a little pop toward Houston pitcher Vern Rue, grabs the ball, throws to first to double Manny Trio. The Phillies roared from the dugout. That Rule had not caught the ball cleanly off the dirt. First baseman Art Howe picks up the ball and looking like a broken field runner, runs over to second base, steps on the bag where McBride had been. The Astros won a triple play, but wait, plate umpire Doug Harvey had not signaled an out on the catch. Harvey summoned his fellow umpire Ed Vargo from first to talk about it. Vargo believed Rule had caught the ball. Harvey then called the out. And uh, the Phillies come charging out of the dugout thinking Harvey's called triple play. They're like a brigade on the field. Look at it again. The umpires then go to talk to National League President Chubb Feeney seated along the first baseline. After the conference, the decision, not a triple play, but a double play. Both teams then protested the game and the decision. Was it a compromise? Don Drysdale earlier asked umpire Harvey. Doug, was it a compromise? In no way, Don. Uh, in the first place, when the ball was struck, it was not a line drive per se. It was what we call a humpback line drive. And as the ball went away from me towards the pitcher, I, in my mind's eye, said, that's going to be close. He might trap it. And I just, like, leaned forward. Well, as I'm ready to see it actually happen, Maddox cut across in front of me. And now in my mind's eye, like I say, I said to myself, it could be a trap. I've got him running. I looked up immediately. I see that the runner from first has broken completely. I went, I've got to call it something. This all takes a matter of a hundredth of a second. I mean, these are things that go through your mind. I said, I've got to call it something. I've got two runners on the bases running. I have a batter runner running. I put hands down. I says, I'll straighten this out later. I went hands down, never having actually seen whether he caught the ball or whether it was trapped, but it was my call basically all the way, Don. If I even get a glimpse of it, I call it, I stick with it. Nobody changes my mind. I don't care if I'm wrong from here to Toledo. I would have stuck with it because my call. I immediately now 
they throw to first base. Vargo gives them an out call. I have to figure out, does he mean single out on the batter runner? Does he mean double play out? So that's when now I see everybody charging. I know that the runner from second has gone part way and stopped until he saw my hands down. Then he broke for third. The other runner, like I say, broke immediately from first. He went immediately. So now I called timeout. I walked over to Ed Vargo. I says, Eddie, how'd you see it? I said, I've got to have some help on it. Do you? Eddie came right out and says he caught the ball, Harva. And I turned around and I said, all right, double play. Now, this is about the time that Art uh, the first baseman, Art Howe, takes off and runs over to second base, and they appeal the guy having left second base. Well, before this ever happened, I had in my mind there will be no triple play because that runner went on my hands down. Why? The other, because he feels I've said no catch, so he has to advance. He's being forced to advance, actually, according to his mind. But when I other thing did it, then I've got a directive at home that came out some 10, 11, 12 years ago, maybe. But it says if, because of the umpire's actions, it causes a counteraction by a player, which puts that player in jeopardy, the umpire may negate that and put the runner where he thinks he should be. And that's what I did with him. Continuing the drama, bottom of the fourth, Cabell doubles and scores the first run on Art Howe's sacrifice fly. Gary Woods, having walked with the play in front of him, sees Philadelphia left fielder Lonnie Smith mishandle the ball on the throw. Ball rolls on the ground in front of him. Woods keeps running. Smith pursues the ball, picks it up, and then throws Wood out at third. In the eighth inning, Philadelphia took a 3-2 lead. Mike Schmidt at first, trio, a liner to right fielder Jeff Leonard. Watch carefully, grabs the ball right off the ground. Schmidt to second base after a moment or two of indecision. Watch Schmidt, sees the ball go, stop, start back. Then on to second base, believing the ball had been trapped. Umpire Bruce Froming signaled catch out. Schmidt thinking he's safe at second. Then realizes he has been doubled off first and he can't believe it. Third out of the inning. Bottom of the ninth, Houston ties the game 3-3 when Terry Poole singles Landestoy home from second. Cabell the hitter, liner to right. Poole running, apparently to steal, never look. He was doubled off first, ending the ending. Watch the decoy by the second baseman, Manny Trio. Now Poole realizing too late, the ball had been caught, doubled off. Top of the tenth, 3-3 three, three score, one out, Pete Rose singles, he's on first, Schmidt out to left on a fly ball, Luzinski pinch double to left, Rose running, Cruz his throw, short hops relay a man Landis door, his throw to the catcher Bochy, short hops him, can't handle it, Rose runs into him, flattens him, after the collision, Rose steps on home plate to score the run, the Phillies go on to win the game, game four, five, three. Both protests disallowed, here's Howard Cosell earlier with National League President Jeff Feeney. Chubb Dallas Green's protest was negated, of course, by the Philadelphia victory. When did you take action on Bill Verdon's protest? I took action right after the game, Howard, but uh, there really wasn't much to Bill's protest because, one, uh, the, the decision was an umpire's decision. It was not a rule violation or a, mis a misinterpretation of the rule by the umpires, uh, plus the fact that we have a rule in the book that if the, if the uh, uh, protest does not have an effect on the game, which this didn't, as Boa made out, uh, the protest would be negated. And that game has caused a lot of us to wonder whether the old show will make a comeback tonight. Can you top this? Game five for the National League pennant coming up. Batting order for the Phils. Pete Rose leading off. Then comes Bake McBride after the Baker. Mike Schmidt, who has yet to produce the way they expected. The Bull is back in the lineup tonight. Greg Luzinski. Manny Trio after the Bull. And then comes Gary Maddox, who's been a solid player. Larry Boa, another solid player. Then Bob Boone, who's been struggling. And finally, the youngster, Marty Bystrom. Done. You're looking down into the Houston Astro dugout as they prepare to take the field, and the crowd has come chanting tonight. The Astrodome is packed to its virtual rafters. It was a building that was used for two major sports contests yesterday, but they've got it. Spotless for tonight's ball game, and the crowd comes to its feet as the Astros take the field. All right, 
right, we will now take a look at the Houston defensive alignment tonight. Art Howe will be in the starting lineup. He will be at first base. The veteran Joe Morgan at second base. The shortstop is Craig Reynolds back in the lineup again tonight. And over at third base, that is Enos Cabell. As we move to the outfield, in left field, Jose Cruz. In center field, Terry Poole. Remember, Cesar Cedeno had that bad ankle in the operation on it. And in right field, Denny Walling. Behind the plate doing the catching, and yes, he is okay for this fifth game, Luis Pujol. And on the mound, the veteran right-hander Nolan Ryan, a record of 11 wins and 10 losses, 1-2 and two against Philadelphia this year, and on the year, a 3.35 earned run average. Pete Rose ready to lead off. Earlier I asked him, do you figure yesterday's win did it for your team? And Petey said. Oh, no, they're a good ball club, and uh, we got a fine pitcher pitching tonight, and they got a Hall of Fame pitcher, Nolan Ryan, and we got to uh, go out and try to score first. I think the team who scores first is going to definitely be in the driver's seat tonight. And Pete Rose comes to the plate. He is 4-12 in this championship series, 7 out of 17. He's been walked three times. He'll be followed by Bank McBride and Mike Schmidt. And it's a typical Rose reaction from the crowd as Pete comes to the plate. They know he's poisoned. He has been troublesome for so many people for so many years in this game of baseball. Nolan Ryan pulls his cap down and the right hander from Alvin Texas is ready to pitch a big game in his career. Ball one. Whichever team scores first will win it. Pete said. I wonder. Well to go along with that Houston they had a record of 32 wins and six losses in games at the Astrodome in which they did score first and now you're even at one and one. The first pitch was a 95 mile an hour fastball for ball one. The second pitch a 96 mile an hour fastball for ball for strike one. So here is Nolan Ryan even with Rose at one and one. Pitching with three days rest not an oddity for Ryan at all. That's inside. He was a little younger though when he worked as part of a four man rotation with the California Angels from 72 to 78. They are the championship series for Pete Rose. Shows you the kind of clutch yeah. player he is. And why the crowd groans when he comes to the plate. 2 1 pitch is a ball just high. I think the big thing that's going to be the key to Nolan Ryan, Nolan, as he always has to do, he must check his mechanics. He must make sure he is not too keyed up and tries to overthrow the ball. He must stay within himself. 3 1 to Rose. On the corner, 3 2. Just see Pete nod his head. Good pitch as he looked at the 96 mile an hour fastball. I'm sure Ed Vargo and all the umpires after yesterday's game, they will take any positive approach or reaction that they can get <laughs> from anybody. <laughs> Full count to Rose. Got it. That's the fastball, and if Ryan. Keeps it on that outside corner to the left handers and on the inside corner to the right handers it will have a tendency to tail and sink away Rose really not too happy with that call yet he wasn't arguing he wound up nodding his head I think he was really asking Ed Vargo where was it look how quickly he looked around to check the call he was concerned about having looked at it. But did you see it run away? Yeah, it, it was a pitch he could do nothing with. It does. He has a good tailing fastball when he keeps it down. Bake McBride, 278 in the series. Swing and a miss, struck one. That 98 time. miles an hour. <laughs> <laughs> That'll get you to Alvin, Texas, in a hurry. Even the Nacogdoches. The fastest one he's been clocked this year was 99. He loosens Bake a little bit inside to make it one and one. Bake has struck out three times in the championship series. He's five for 18, a 309 hitter on the regular season. That'll be a key that these Phillies will be keying in on Ryan, and that is, okay, yes, he can throw the fastball 95, 98 miles an hour, and there's a great statistic at home, eight and two at the dome this year. But is he going to be able to get his curveball over? He hasn't tried it yet, really. 
He's he missed on the last pitch of McBride almost nailed him on the knee. Bang with a hard one. But the thing is Keith if he has a little problem with the curveball and he has any kind of consistency in the control department with a fastball he can still be tough. If he can throw it 95 miles an hour all night and get the fastball to the strike zone he won't need. Lifted to left field for Cruz. Jose makes the catch, two out. That's the big man who really has been struggling, even though he figured in a key play when Joe Morgan sought to throw to third to steal Pete Rose off base and neglected to throw to first to get Mike Schmidt. In that eighth inning, only one RBI in the series. Two out, Rose and McBride retired. Schmidt checks and takes the breaking pitch low. When Ryan has the good curve, it just drops off. And the great velocity on both pitches. We know what his fastball can do as far as miles per hour is concerned but he has great velocity on his curveball too. That's what makes him so tough if he's right with both pitches. You can't look for two pitches. You can only look for one. Lifted in the air to the right side and the first baseman Art Howe in foul ground has to play. So the Philadelphia Phillies are turned away in the top half of the first inning as Ryan looks impressive. The Astros are coming up. Marty Bystrom at 5 and 0 was in the minor leagues as recently as August brought up and has pitched very well. I asked National League president Chubb Feeney to tell how he made uh, Bystrom the, the rule eligible. is that you can make a player eligible uh, that is in your farm system if in fact you have an injury to another player the player must uh, be in the same position as the player that's injured and obviously uh, the player injured in this question was Espinoza. Uh, the facts were uh, the only thing that was in, uh, of, of importance was whether Espinoza was actually in, uh, injured. Uh, we did have a, a doctor's report. Uh, the commissioner's office talked to both the doctor uh, we, uh, and Espinoza. Uh, we were all satisfied that Espinoza was in fact unable to pitch and therefore Bystrom who had been in their farm system on August 31st was made eligible. All right, some comments of National League President Chubb Feeney. The Houston Astro lineup. Poole, Cabell, Morgan, Cruz, Walling, Howe, Pujols, Reynolds, and Ryan. And Poole in particular has been outstanding offensively. Defense for the Phillies? Now well, that will be the same that we've seen all the time from first to third. Rose, Trio, Bowen, Schmidt, the outfield. Luzinski back in there along with Maddox and McBride and the battery of Boone and Marty Bystrom. A fine 5 0. Earned, uh, he had a 5 0 record with a 1.50 earned run average. He's got good control, Keith. He can spot his fastball. He throws all the pitches, a curveball slider, and the change. And Dallas Green is very confident in this young man. He's got to be to start this kind of a ball game. You betcha. He's only 22 years old out of Miami, Florida. And by, re by research from Steve Hurt, he ascertains he is the youngest pitcher ever to start a game of this consequence in the major leagues either a championship series game that would decide the title or a World Series. Terry Poole slides up the bat handle takes it away for ball one. Yet Dallas Green told Don Drysdale in an earlier interview that he stayed with Ron Reed in game number two because of experience. Well I think right now that he's going with a man that he hopes is going to have a hot hand he's got a little bit of an edge. Howard because these Houston Astros have not seen Marty Bison. Two balls and no strikes on Terry Poole out of Belleville Saskatchewan. In his five victories he beat the Cubs the Mets and the Cardinals. There's a strike. He was a red hot pitcher in September. But pitching the the game in the championship series may not be quite the same as the Cubs and the Cardinals. Left field base hit. 
What a series he's had. He really is. That's his seventh hit of the series, and interestingly, he hit that one to left. Of the previous six, five were pulled sharply to right, and we developed for you yesterday the way he built up his strength, taking a strength program, living with it, and then getting around on the pitch and learning to pull. Even though the Dallas Green has elected to start Bystrom, and he knows that he's the most inexperienced pitcher to go in any of these series, you know he's going to be keeping a very close eye on him. There's no tomorrow for either one of these two clubs. They will go with their entire staff. If you look at Dallas Green, he will pitch now to Enos Cabell with Joe Morgan moving to the on deck circle. Well, if he has to go Dallas Green to Tuck McGraw again, Tuck may come out with an artificial left arm. <laughs> I would think the Dick Ruthven will be one of the first in the pin. I would think. One of the big flaws you saw Morgan on deck, and this is what Marty Bystrom has worked on quite a bit. He's had a lot of trouble holding runners on base. He's had a high leg kick. They've tried to work a lot with it. But when you get into a series like this, of all the scouting reports, the Houston Astros, even though they haven't seen him, they know that. The crowd isn't giving him any relief, are they? Oh, this is awful noisy. They pitch out. Fool's not going. Now if you're Bob Boone you're in a position how much leeway can you take with Bystrom how many times can you pitch out. Bull with the leadoff single to left on first base. Bell up Morgan to follow. Fourth hitter would be Cruz another left handed batter. You get Morgan Cruz walling in a row all lefties. Bill Burton in the dugout. Rule does not go. The breaking pitch is up high. Two balls, no strikes. Now in a position like this, although Bill Burton is really not a big hit and run man, and even with the type of club that they have, that's a little bit surprising. We'll have to see if Bill might try and do something. Started off early. He knows how successful the Astros have been here at home. He knows what it means to score the first run. Cabell diving out of the way. You mentioned the hit and run. Burden. Have yeah, a look at this again. He just tries and overthrows the breaking pitch and he just hangs it inside. Cabell trying to decoy him a little bit. He almost gets picked off. Burden could be a gambling manager as he was when he left Sam Beto in to bunt yesterday in the bottom of the ninth. But he is conservative when it comes to the hit and run and squeeze. He says too many things can go against him. There's a strike. It is now three and one. There's a good angle too and a good shot of Marty Bystrom in that high leg kick. He kicks it up and then he kind of cocks it a little bit before he starts coming to the plate. When you do that for so many years although he's just a youngster starting his professional career in 1977 it's an awful tough habit to break. Ooh, go. The bell swings. It's a fly ball to right center. Maddox drifting over. McBride is there, and it's McBride for the catch. And this time, Terry Poole saw it and went back. Let's see. He's not stealing. That was a hit and run. He did go to it. Run. He's looking up on that particular pitch of his ball four. He doesn't have to worry about anything. All he's got to do there is pick up the ball. To me, this man is the story of this series. A great professional. The man has been playing on one leg. Experience a plenty at the plate. Only twice in 15 appearances now as the count to Joe Morgan not gone to at least two and two. He's been waiting on most of the Philadelphia pitchers looking for his pitch. He takes strike one. Well he's walked six times that tells you a little something he's not hitting too much for the average 222 two hits and nine at bats but at the six base on balls and he's been on there eight times. Cruz to the on deck circle one out. Gary Poole off first. Oh, 
change and uh, Morgan a ball and one strike there's Jose. Morgan takes throw through safe close <laughs> Terry Poole has an excellent jump you see him out there the foot on the carpet now he picks it up the throw a little bit low and to the third base side and right there on top of the play is our second base umpire Bob Engel and here we go again from our high shot from the gondola watch it again from the other angle you saw the foot get into the base before the tag was made there you see it again and so beautiful now he's at the turn for Morgan with a count of two and one on Joe oh that's a good pitch you tied him oh. up and a good location. That curveball catching that inside corner. Now it's 2 2. That was Poole's second stolen base of the series. The Astros took several games to get started running, but they're now four out of five. Morgan has left center. Hits the ball to straightaway center. Hits it deep. Sending Maddox back. Poole tags. Poole's going. Maddox throw. And Poole's at third. Two down. The roar from the crowd is to greet Jose Cruz as he comes to the plate with Poole over on third and Cruz like Morgan has walked six times so far. They have done a tap dance on the record book for the National League Championship Series these two teams. <laughs> the two two men Morgan and Cruz walking six times establishes a new five game mark for the National League Series. Well, Jose took a full swing and didn't get anything out of it. He's going to try and see if he can reach those seats. Now, he is certainly capable of reaching them. Now, you might see him turn back and kind of change and adjust his swing just a little bit. All he's looking for is a base hit. It's high. 1-1. One, one. You've got to be ready on Bystrom. He's got a good fastball. Cruz Hilda <laughs> one two foul ball See the curveball by Bystrom. He's got an excellent curveball. Now you'll see Jose Cruz. He won't be taking that real big swing, I wouldn't think. He's just trying to move the ball around right now. Look at this curveball again by Marty Bystrom. Mm, good one. Inside count levels 2-2. Two, two. You know it's amazing that you play 166 regular schedule, well, not 162 in the regular schedule, four in the playoffs, and it all boils down to the 167th game of the year. And you know that every one of these guys is tired, but they've got the adrenaline up tonight. Foul back. The Astros are not just tired, they're battered. After all, they lost their cornerstone pitcher and Jay Rodney. They lost their steadiest going hitter in Cesar Cedeno, and Pujols is catching, and he's a damaged property, as has been Ashby, and even to a degree the youngster, Bochy, who was put in yesterday under the circumstances that made it necessary. 2 2 to Jose Cruz. Right side, base hit. Houston gets the lead. Pujols scores from third. And Cruz goes in the second, a double. <laughs> the 
so once again the evidence of what we have earlier discussed in this series as we look at it again watch Cruz get around on it pull it sharply to right he is the hitter who uses the entire ball ball. He got the curve ball up over the plate a little bit, and with two outs, Cruz is going to go to second base anyway. McBride got on that ball in a hurry, but he's going to keep right on going. Now he's in scoring position for Dennis Walling. Cruz on base 12 times in 19 trips. That's a tidy average. Walling hits it sharply. Trio, great backhand stop, and gets him. Whoa, that... That was a good play by Trio. Rug, carpet, I don't care what to call it. He had to make it perfect because it was hit so sharply. And it comes right up into the middle of his glove, and he's able to grip it and throw out Walling. But Houston leads after one, one to nothing. We're back live in the Astrodome, and there will be a graphic there. It shows you what happens when the Astros score first here. But you remember, as Pete Rose led off, you heard him say, whoever scores first will win the ball game, a statement he would like now to forget. Luzinski leads off for Philadelphia to be followed by Trio and Maddox. Luzinski primarily a pole hitter. He did have a check swing double off Nolan Ryan in game number two to the right side. But everything else he's hit has been pulled. Including the pinch double of yesterday, and Ryan now goes even with him at 1 1 on the swinging strike. Well, here's a man right here has won both ball games at Philadelphia's won. Two balls and a strike. Just a mite closer, and he'd be out of there. Wondering, see the bull make contact with a Ryan 96 mile an hour fastball or so. They appeal, strike. They call it. First base umpire Jerry Crawford. Here we look at it one more time. This is Ryan's curveball. It's a ball, but when you look at the bat angle of Luzinski, there's no question about that. That's a strike. That's why it's tough. You can't look for two pitches. 2-2, two, two, fouled off. He's now up to 97 miles an hour. Well, Luzinski did win the first game, as you suggested, with his two-run homer. He got the big hit in the second game that brought them back. Six miles per hour, Keith. When you can hear the catcher's glove pop like that, as far away as we are, you know that he's whistling. Well, as Manny Trio stands in, and also Keith, you know that when Ryan throwing that fastball that hard, and all of a sudden he starts hitting good spots and his location is good, look out. Trio has been an overlooked player in this series. Very consistent, very solid. Up high. Hitting over 300 for the series and a sparkling play to end the first inning. Ball is hit, looping into right center, drops in front of Poole for a base hit. And he gives more of same. So the Phillies have their first hit of the night, and Manny Trio just hit a 98 mile an hour fastball for a single. And the grin on his face at first base, I think, tells of the delight that he feels. He's had a good series, Keith. That's his sixth hit of the series. He's had a couple of RBIs. Here's Gary Maddox, who's been a horse for the Phillies in this championship series. 313 average. Made some great plays defensively, troublesome offensively. Curveball, misses, ball one. See Ed Vargo just motioning out to Ryan as Ryan stares in. Vargo with a quick flip of the hands at a little high. They go to first.
first. He'll set the umpires. Ed Vargo back of the plate. Jerry Crawford first. Bob Engel second. Terry Tata third. Left field line Bruce Froming. Right field line Doug Harvey. Doug probably happy to be out there tonight after yesterday. Ball two. It's up high. Well, Froming's moved away from Ruben Amaro. <laughs> yeah. He's over in left field. We'll see Manny moving off first base. From the camera in the gondola. And the pitch is inside and low. Gary Maddox, our cameraman, Frank Salicia, has been up there in the gondola all week. I hope they'll let him come down after the game's over. Three and nothing. Ryan has walked Gary Maddox, sending Trio to second. You've got one out, and Larry Boa is coming to the plate. Bill Burton, unflappable, standing in the dugout, observing, calculating. Now there was a lot of talk about whether Ryan would start whether Ken Force should start Bill Burton has elected to go with Nolan Ryan for the simple reason that Force in his past has been a relief pitcher also he's a type of pitcher that he can get loose quicker than what Ryan can and he can come in with maybe a little bit better control. Ryan misses on Boa now go ball one Houston leading one to nothing Cool. single to lead the ball game for Houston stole second and Cruz doubled him home. Astros on top. Billy's up, top of the second. There's a strike. Base runners for Philadelphia. Trios at second. He singled. Maddox at first. He walked. Boa's first trip tonight. Larry at 286 in the series. Punches it foul. You see the outfield alignment on. Larry Boa and it's as we've talked about throughout the course of the series and maybe a little bit more for Ryan they pitch him away and play him away. A lot of room on that line down the right field line the infield about straight away. It down, drops it, picks it up, goes to first. They get four. The runners, Trio and Maddox, move up to third and second. There was a very close play. Ryan, if he comes up with a ball the first time and he's able to get out of his glove, he's got a chance for the double play. He's got it. Now he's off balance just a little bit as he reaches it, rolls out of his glove. And now look at the position he's in throwing to first. He's going to second, but says, No, I'm going to go to first, throwing with a completely open body. And he almost, well, he almost throws it into the runner. Mark Powell doing a fine job to dance out of the way of Boa. Now his Bob Boone and his figures reflect the difficulty he's been having. And yet he has hit at least four balls very hard that did not fall for him. Well, you've got a situation here first base open, the pitcher on deck, and you can't give him anything getting the hit. They'd love to have the pitcher lead the next inning. That's just what I was going to say. You would love to have the pitcher lead off the next inning, but you're going to try and really pitch Booney as tough as you can possibly pitch him. But if you get behind, you still can't come in there. Strike one on Boone. Runners at second and third. Hit up the middle, base hit, might produce two runs. Boom, with a sharp single to center, and the Phillies get the lead two to one in the top of the second. I just, I can't understand that. With first base open and the pitcher up next. That's what I was about to say when you talked about you love to have the pitcher open the next inning. That's another part <laughs> of what I think of false mottos in baseball. And this is a fastball that's just up over the plate. 
Ryan's trying to move it in on him, but he gets it there. And Booney, he's just trying to make contact. He kind of fights it off of him a little bit. And right back up the middle with two outs, the runners are going. And now the Phillies are on top. His series batting average was deceptive, as I indicated. He's been hitting much better than the average indicated. Bystrom is at the plate, and obviously, with the DH in effect in the minor leagues, he has not received a great deal of opportunity to swing the bat. As an old motto in baseball, sometimes the fear of a walk is worse than the walk. They didn't walk Luzinski in game number one when they could have. And he hit his two run home run. Well, there's nobody any more upset right now in this Astrodome than that man right there, Nolan Ryan. And I guarantee you he's thinking about that pitch. Nobody in this house thought he'd lose that lead that quickly. Two and one on Bison. And right away we get action in the Houston bullpen. Ken Force. That is Kenny Force. Right. And Andujar. Two of them going out there. Andujar will be the guard. Guard. But Everybody's in the ball game tonight, one way or the other. Well, somebody's going to have a long winter the rest. That's all. Right. I wonder what that's like. <laughs> <laughs> Dallas Green. The 2 2 pitch to Bystrom. The shortstop Reynolds crosses second. Gets the force on Boone, but damage is done. The Phillies with Trio and Maddox scoring on the single by Boone lead two to one. This telecast presented by authority of Major League Baseball intended for the private non-commercial use of our audience. Any publication, reproduction, retransmission, or other use of the pictures, descriptions, and accounts of this game without the express written consent of Major League Baseball is prohibited. Marty Bystrom on the mound will be pitching here in the bottom of the second inning to Art Howe, Louis Pujols, and Craig Reynolds. Keep track if you can, and we'll try to help you of all of the little things that happen the way these two teams have scratched and clawed at one another during the course of this game. Remember Trio's great play to end the first inning, corralling Denny Walling's sharply hit grounder as it appeared to be headed toward right center field which would have scored Jose Cruz and it was Trio who started the fills off in the second inning. Art Howe who was a 283 hitter for Houston in the regular season and the hero for them in the struggle against Los Angeles in the playoff game but only one hit in 11 trips. In the championship series against the Phillies. Bystrom is in with a strike when they're starting. He's got to give the youngster a little confidence right now to drop down one to nothing and then see his teammates come back and pick up two for him in their next inning. Curve balls a dandy. Strike two. This youngster, Monty Bystrom, was signed as a free agent. And there is a story behind the way it happened. We'll develop that for you so you know more about it. That was his record on his five starts in September. Fastball is inside to Howe. Well, actually, he was on the Phil's 40 man roster in spring training, and a lot of people thought he would make the team, but he pulled a hamstring, then he slipped in the clubhouse and suffered a second degree pull, went on the disabled list. Then he went off to the minors to get back in shape and then came back to the big club in September and the bat explodes and goes into the crowd as it's looped out to the second baseman trio. The barrel of the bat the bat just exploded and it went sailing into the crowd. Well Ooh. that can be dangerous right over the Philadelphia Philly dugout but it appears that everybody's OK. He just has it sawed off that's all. And Little looper at the Manny Trio. You can see the barrel of the bat, the right of your screen, going on up over the dugout and into the seats. That is one time when you don't keep your eye on the ball if you're one of those fans over there. That's you. <laughs> Bystrom was eligible for the baseball draft in June of 76. Everybody, but everybody, passed him up. 
He went to Miami Dade South Junior College, completed his program there, and Hugh Alexander was the scout who actually did go down to work Bystrom out and sign. Here is Pujols now, swinging and missing on a curveball. Lewitt had to come out of the ball game yesterday when a foul struck him in the right ankle area. And it was not really known until the two hours before game time tonight whether or not he could play. But the x ray showed no breaks. He's taped it up and said he wouldn't miss it, sore or no. Interestingly, though, Bill Verdon said that should Pujols get hurt again, Ashby this time feels that he can play and he would be the one to go in there. There's Bill Verdon. That curve is inside. Two balls and one strike to Bujols. We were talking to Bill prior to the game and about what was happening yesterday. And they had that when Bochi was in there and said, what if all three of your catchers could not make it? Who can catch? And he said, I don't know. He said, we don't have anybody. And I said, well, what about Art Howe? It seems as though that he can be, there's Alan Ashby. It seems that he might be one that you might think about. He said, well, he would be the first one that would probably come up and volunteer and who I might think about, except he's had that bad back. Ball four to Pujols. Well, Billy, he's kind of strapped if you ever get that far, but right now I think he's going to be okay. As I detail the story of Bystrom coming with the fields, I mentioned Hugh Alexander was sent down, working, worked him out, signed him. But a prior Philadelphia scout had worked the kid out and rejected. Subsequently, that scout was fired. Greg Reynolds at the plate. He's only had the ball out of the infield once in 12 at bats. Key man when he was batting second because of his proficiency with the bunt. He's been dropped to the number eight position in the order this season. He takes ball one. Looks as though that you've got two offensive units that are saying the same thing. And that is when they go up the home plate, make him throw strikes. Doesn't kick out to McBride. He's got to go way to the corner. It appeared here that Poole's going to score, but the great arm of Manny Trio, and look at this strike to Booney right there. And again, Manny Trio becomes the significant figure. Reynolds, who had been hitless, coming through. He was overdue. Now watch Trio. Boy, he has something on that throw, too. And Eddie Vargo right there in a perfect position. And Greg Reynolds is at third. And that's the throw that Landis Doy did not make yesterday. Ryan hits it to the shortstop, Boa. Throw the first in time. And the inning is over. And so the Astros are turned away on the great play at the plate. And after two innings in the Astrodome, it's Phillies leading 2-1. to one. The play at the plate on Pujols. Well, you've got to say, Keith, that that is something that is a manager's delight as you see the tag by Booney. He's got the left leg out there to block him off a little bit. But boy, what a great, great exhibition of how to hit a cutoff man and how to make the relay play. It was great execution, but such little things again. First, we've talked about Trio. Second, if Ashby is catching, if he's well, he scores somewhere along the line between third and home. I think Louie just ran out of gas. Top of the order against Ryan now Rose McBride and Schmidt top of the third inning and Pete lines it to left field just under the glove of Cabell and he's on again. You can expect Forge to get up at any point now. 
Now that ball was hit hard. Cabell has to play in because Rhodes might try and drop one down there. The ball actually, he doesn't move. He's froze for a moment. Now it goes right underneath his glove. I think Enos, nine times out of ten, had catch that ball. But this is the one time. Rose now has eight singles in a championship series, which is another record. Forsh again up in the pen for Houston. Here's McBride. Strike. The thing is, right now, that Ryan has got to hold the Phillies at bay. He can't give them too much breathing room because these Houston Astros are not that much of a catch up ball club. Phillies lead two to one. Astros scored one bottom of the first. Phillies came back with two at the top of the second. Now hitting in the top of the third. Rose goes. Pitch fouled off. Rose will come back. Friendly little bat from Pete to Joe. They've spent every day getting one another before each game. He does now have the that playoff for itself. Yep. Need a book to list all of the marks he's hung up in his career. Pitch is way up. You can hear Ryan. You can hear him run all the way up here when he delivers that ball. He's always done that. When you can hear it all the way up here, the noise of this crowd—it's quite loud. He's now thrown 40 pitches, Don. Side with a fastball. Fouled away. Velocity is still awesome. 97 on the last three pitches. You can kind of sit home and pick up the location and actually the pitch and the attempted location. Let's turn around and put it that way that Ryan has in the back of his mind. They won't use the sequence signs with a runner on first base. <laughs> That's high. Two and, and two. There's a case where he just tried to overthrow the curveball. And from that center field camera shot, that's where you'll pick up the sign and the location. But here's the pitch again. Just tries to overthrow it. Back to the breaking pitch. Two two. Foul. Now you can't really do that with a man on second base for some of you people that wonder about a sequence pitch because you have a man out at second base especially in the knowledge of Rose and all he does is relay the pitch to the hitter. And of course that's a definite advantage right there. Then they will go to a sequence sign They put a number of signs down. There's Pete at first with Art Howe. And 2 2 to make McBride now as Pete dances off first pitch hung on and miss. And McBride strikes out with that chopping motion that he uses. So Rose on first base after his single. McBride strikes out, and here comes Mike Schmidt. And Schmidt steps up to the plate with a 263 average, 250 now after fouling out the first time. Playing for the National League pennant in the fifth game of the National League Championship Series at the Astrodome in Houston. And the Phillies are leading two to one. <laughs> Nolan Ryan pitching for Houston burns a fastball on the inside corner for strike one. Lee Elia coaching at third, Ruben Amaro at first. The RBI leaders during the regular season in the National League shown there. But 121 in the regular season and only one in the championship series. Rose running, throw to Morgan. Rose over slides it, he's out. And there's an excellent play by the second baseman, Joe Morgan. A good throw by Pujols. The throw has him beat. Morgan stays with it, goes over, makes the play. Rose going by and now just coming back with the glove. He tried to catch it with his hand. Now let's look at it again from the overhead shot. The throw's there. Morgan attempting to tag. Rose trying to kick out of the way, but he comes in with a glove, and that's where Joe has him dead. 
Bills are now seven out of ten in stolen bases. What a view you get from that gun. You can see it all so clearly. Count to Mike Schmidt, one ball, two strikes. When the play is directly below you, as that was. That is a great shot. And they want the fastball up on him. Two up. It's two and two. We'll try and make Mike. Try and chase that fastball up and in. We've talked about Mike moving off of the plate a little bit, but still, you've got to try and move that ball in on him. You've got to try and keep the big guy tied up. And no, he wasn't too happy. He wasn't, didn't want to throw that pitch. And here's where a catcher suggests a pitch. And a pitcher occasion. They want away with a fastball, in with a fastball. He settles for the curve. And he struck him out with it. So Rose singles, but he's thrown out. Going to second. Phillies are turned away in the top of the third. So after two and a half, Phillies two, Astros one. Tomorrow night on That's Incredible, one of the most amazing underwater stunts ever performed, and you'll meet a man who claims to have actual photographs of UFOs. That's Incredible, tomorrow night, over most of these ABC stations. Top of the order for Houston. Second time around against the young right-hander Marty Bystrom. Terry Poole is up there, single, stole second, and scored Houston's only run of the game. And it'll be Cabell and Morgan. Base hit, pulls two for two. McBride in a hurry, holds him at first. This guy is having a series that's incredible. Marvelous. Now they got a change up up over the plate. He didn't quite have it in a good location, and he had too much velocity on it. Pool the first time up, he took the fastball to the opposite field. Now he comes with a change, and it's up. And Terry just goes out and turns the hands over. Now you look for Cabell to bunt. Rose will be charging from first and Schmidt from third. Leopard, Don Leopard, the third base coach, flashing the signs. Uh, probably decision already made before he ever walked out there. Bob Lillis is the first base coach. There's Lillis. Bystrom has been struggling, no question about it. He got away with it last inning on the brilliantly executed relay play. When Reynolds had in effect tripled, the triple became of necessity a double in the scoring because Pujols was out at the plate. Mr. Drysdale, you look for the bump. I got to. I guarantee you Dallas Green's looking for the bunt. Mike Schmidt's looking for the bunt. Pete Rose is looking for the bunt. Well, you really got to practice a lot on this artificial surface, too, to bunt. He's not. Popped up, coming back. Boone chasing to the wall. Bobby's got a play, makes the catch. Well, see what that might turn out to be. Still can't believe that Nolan did not walk Boom in the second inning. Well, so he's got to do that on his own, Howard. Absolutely. You don't have manager to. Manager really doesn't tell him. Don't have to, no. Unless a manager just doesn't have the confidence that the man can pitch around a particular hitter. But you've got to do that on your own. You forget about that liking to have the pitcher lead off the inning. Joe Morgan, a five ball to center his first time. Bystrom's fastball runs outside. Somehow, it's always up to Joe with this ball club. He's got to ignite them. He's got to be the key run producer. And they've also got to keep a close eye on Terry Poole at first base. He's got his toe hooked on the rug. Bluffs it, pitch out, throw back to first. 
was a good play by Pete Rose. He's not worried about making any tag whatsoever. Of course, Booney's thinking the same thing, trying to think along the lines of Terry Poole. Pete right there, he just got to try and catch the ball. That one could have gotten away. I was watching the right fielder, Big McBride. He very alertly, he was charging. Ball is hit high in the air to right center field. Maddox going way back, way back to the track. He makes the catch, and Poole had already turned around second and has to come back. You can't hit it much harder than that in this ballpark. That's why Green benched Luzinski yesterday. He said, what's the sense of having a guy hit a ball 400 feet and seeing it die on you? The ballpark negates power. It does that, and Joe Morgan, he's a little hot down there. He thought that ball had a chance to go out. So did Terry Poole. He thought it might be at least off of the wall. Poole, as you said, Keith, had actually rounded second base, and he had plenty of time to get back to first. But as Joe had pulled it 20 feet to the right, more into right center, it is in the seats. Lundstrom getting away with it. Cruz, the hitter. And no movement on the Philadelphia bullpen area. Now is when you gotta send Poole, Don. Well, gotta get see. him to second, or at least try to. With Cruz, your runs batted in later up. Well, you haven't sacrificed. If that would have gone along okay, well, he'd have gone to third. He's, he's over at first right now, but Trio is moving over towards the bag at second base. It's a strike, one and one. Well, you sacrifice uh, Poole to second by Cabell, though Cabell has no reputation as a mutter. And then Morgan's uh, ball is going to move him to third. But if, if, if. That's foul. How many times can you say in this series if? Oh. <laughs> it's been an well, incredible that's baseball, matchup. of course, but seems to me you got to send Poole. Because Poole was stealing yesterday. Well, he was stealing yesterday, and we saw on the Cabell opening of the hit show. hit the fly ball. A great decoy by Manny Trio. With this count, you might see him go. Pitch is well outside, two and two. With the count, with a two strike count. Denny Walling is the man on deck. That's foul. Well, at 2 2, the kid came back with a pretty decent curveball, didn't he? He certainly did. They've hit some balls hard off of him, but he's. He's managed to stay right in there. He really hasn't lost his composure at all. He's still battling him. Well, that's what Dallas Green is hoping. I know he'd love to see him go nine innings and win about 10 to 1, but I don't know if that's going to be the score here tonight. Pitch out. There's what Booney's thinking, too. He's thinking Poole has to go. Of course he's thinking he has to go. Now he doesn't have to worry about it because he knows he's going to go. <laughs> Three balls and two strikes and two out. There he goes. Pitches inside. Ball four. So the matter of getting the runner into scoring position becomes academic. Young Bystrom takes care of that. You wonder how long Bystrom will get away with it. Dallas Green is trying to say, where was the pitch? I guarantee you, Dallas has got about a shade lighter. <laughs> I think he has. <laughs> I was talking there the day before the game. He's, he's got a great personality, a super guy. And he says, I don't know. I said, have you ever seen anything like this? <laughs> It'll give anybody gray hair this year. Here's Denny Walling now, bounced out to the second baseman his first time, the right fielder. Two out. All one. I believe on that last pitch that Dallas is talking about, I wouldn't be surprised. I, I thought Booney jumped up a little bit. He might have blocked Eddie Vargo. Yeah. 
Hit hard to the right side. McBride going back. He flags it down one-handed as he bounces into the wall. And Houston threatens in the bottom of the third. But two plays by the outfielders. First Maddox against the wall in right center. McBride against the wall in right. And Houston comes up empty. We've played three in game number five for the National League pennant. And the Phillies lead the Astros two to one. Line score in the game to the top of the fourth inning for Philadelphia. Greg Luzinski, Manny Trio, and Gary Maddox. The Bulls struck out looking the first time against Nolan Ryan. The curve. Pattern of this game has been a little different, fellows. The Phils have left only one man on in three innings. Houston, adopting the Phillies' old tactics, has left four on. Strike two. Now the Astros getting a little exasperated the way the Philadelphia Phillies were for a while the Phillies hitting the ball hard but leaving a lot of men on base the Astros have hit the ball hard tonight. They don't have that much to show for it. Bounces. Tried to come three straight times with the breaking pitch. He's tried to overthrow that curveball one more time. He only kind of came off the mound funny that time I think he lost his balance just a little bit. Back with a curve. He doesn't want that. He wants the fastball inside. Try and tie him up. Look out. Too tight. 2 2. Struck out the last three batters he's faced. He's got five so far on the evening. Luzinski twice looking tonight. Trio's up. Manny had the first hit in the ball game for the Phillies and scored the first run. Made a dandy defensive play and a terrific relay throw. like to be able to spot that fastball out there about 80 percent of the time. One and one. You hear Nolan grunt again then? You can hear him. Sounds like Jimmy Connors as he executes a serve. That's just about right. Keep the ball down on Trio. Trio's a high fastball hitter. That's where he's done most of his damage in this series. He's got to keep the breaking stuff down, of course. Got to keep the fastball down on him. Second inning, he singled. Maddox walked. Boone brought them both home with a single up the middle. That's foul. Fifty seven pitches now for Nolan Ryan. Each bench its own study. Flicker of a smile from Burden, though he trails. One, two. Looper over Morgan's head. Trios two for two. So trios on with one out. ABC's NCAA college football this coming Saturday. Alabama, Tennessee from Knoxville. Washington, Stanford in the West. Houston, SMU in the Southwest. BYU, Utah State in the Mountain Country. 3.30 Eastern, 2.30 Central, 1.30 Pacific. Remember the time. 3.30 Eastern, 2.30 Central, 1.30 Pacific. Check the local listings for the game in your area. Up to this point in time, Trio is clearly evolving as the Philadelphia hero. Up to this point in time. Maddox skins one back foul. And Nolan got that fastball up on Trio. He was just able to fight it off. Not 
electing to go with a breaking pitch. There's been a lot of people that you can throw in that hat for the most valuable player in this series, but I believe that you're going to have to wait till the outcome of this game to really pick one. Always easy then. The trick is to do it now. Gotta be That's cool if Houston wins. Doesn't make any sense to do it now. Because if you can tell me who's gonna win this game after what we've seen, <laughs> you write it down. <laughs> one one. Two one. I, well, probably to a man, there isn't a player in uniform that cares who the MVP is. That's Not correct. Right now. All they want to do is just get there. What we have to watch for now will be Bicycle. Can he continue to get away with it, or will he now begin to settle down as Houston has blown opportunities? Trio off first. Maddox to the shortstop, Reynolds over the second one, back to first. Double play. Great turnover by Joe Morgan at second base. Trio really barreled in there. So the BP comes in nicely as Reynolds handles up to Morgan and then on to our pal. And in the middle of the fourth inning, our score in Houston, two to one, the Phillies lead. Bottom of the fourth inning, the Houston Astros were sent up against Marty Bystrom, Art Howe, Louis Pujols, Craig Reynolds. Second time in the game, that person was let off. Bottom of an inning. You just almost have to sense, feel that this guy is going to break out of the slump he's been in. They have really handled Art Howe, Philly pitchers have. Outside. If Houston should fail to win this game tonight against the Phillies, what happened in Kansas City today, Howard, will make this a mere almost a mortal weekend. Well, that's what Ed Vargo is doing. He's trying to keep Howe in the box. Howe wants to get back there as far as he can. And Bob Boone saying something to Eddie Vargo and Ed calling time, going with the bat, and kind of drawing out his own batter's box and saying, no, no, you can't get back that far. Take it, Keith. You're referring to the Chiefs' upset of the Oilers by yeah. one point, 21-20. Change speeds a little bit. It's high. Two balls and no strikes. Houston Cougars did win here last night over Texas A&M. The game started at 11:32 last night. Finally got the Astrodome situated for football. They turned right around and went right back to work all night to get it ready for the baseball game tonight. Halftime was at one in the morning. Our director Joe has said he was still studying the replays of yesterday's game. How strokes it to right center. Base hit. Astros have the leadoff man aboard in the bottom of the fourth inning. Quickly, some NFL scores today. Upsets all over the place. Baltimore over Buffalo. Jets won their first game by seven. New England crushed Miami. Detroit over New Orleans, Minnesota beat Chicago, Green Bay and Tampa Bay tied. Cincinnati again upset Pittsburgh, Kansas City upset Houston, and Cleveland crushed Seattle. Dallas murdered San Francisco, Philadelphia beat the Giants. I'll give you the rest of them later, including another stunning upset. Who hopes at the plate? Makes ball one. Art Howe on first base. Nobody out. Bottom of the fourth. 
And they go there to the they are. Oakland over San Diego and Los Angeles over St. Louis. Rooster and Ruthven. Third baseman Schmidt quickly to second to get the force on Howe. There's your bullpen. Brewster and Ruth and Ruthven on the outside. You talk about a pitcher living dangerously. Look at Bystrom. Well, Dallas Green has been sitting and watching and gazing, and he has kind of said the same thing in his mind. And right now, he's not going to be in a position where he's going to go a long time with him. He's got his entire staff down there, as we witnessed the two right handers down in the bullpen. Reynolds, the shortstop. Craig doubled in the corner on the right side his first time. Who holds was on at the time, remember, and was running. Like Bride to Trio to Boone. And they got him at the plate. That's what you've done now. You've taken a little bit of the speed off of the bases in how. That's a bouncer to the right side for Trio. And two out. Not a gimme at the plate. Now he can hit the ball. Matter of fact, he hit a home run right here in the dome. Bounce to the shortstop first time. Who holds it second? Bystrom off. Ryan out. Bystrom really not sure about the signs that Bob Boone is going to just going over just to double check the sequence signs and that's a smart thing for the young man to do. Are we using this are we using that you have different sets of sequence signs as you look at Dallas Green and the Philly dugout and you want to make sure you're in sync with that catcher so you don't cross him up. How about Ryan swinging the bat. He's certainly aware of that he strained some ligaments in his lower back swinging the bat. Strike one on the fastball. Strike two on the curveball. Now we'll talk, and we talked about the sequence signs. You saw the straight signs without a runner on second base. Now you'll see Bob Boone going one, two, three. Curveball strike three. So Ryan is out looking. And the Astros leave Kuholtz at second. And after four innings of play in game number five for the National League pennant, it's Phillies two to one. We've got Monday night football in the Mile High City tomorrow night. The Redskins against the Broncos. And in the wake of the upset by Oakland of San Diego today, this is a critical game for the Broncos. If they win it, they're back in the hunt. And Oakland is already back in. Topsy Turvy League. Seattle upset by Cleveland. Western Division wide open again. Be with us tomorrow. Larry Boa up. Takes a strike. Here's Don. All right, Keith Boa. He'll be followed by Boone and Bystrom. Boa bounced back to Ryan his first time at bat as a crowd comes alive here in the afternoon. They've got some things going, but they got the wrong team at bat. They're just talking about the Houston Astros right now. 0 oh 2 to Larry Boa, a high shot, jam packed, eighth wonder of the world. One ball and two strikes to Boa. Every game a cliffhanger. It's been tremendous. Well, you've still got some action in that Philly bullpen. Ruthman's still throwing. You wonder if Dallas Green might be thinking about making a change. The one two pitch. Gatting. That's Nolan's sixth strikeout. Don't forget, the World Series begins in the National League City on Tuesday, and you'll see in that series 
a very great baseball team I think in the Kansas City Royals they had quite a year Bob Boone stands in that's his championship series play but probably the biggest hit that he is he's got in the series that was his first time at bat and only time at bat with two outs in first base open runners at second and third he single left the middle he has got two big hits in the last week the big one up in Montreal to tie the second game of that series that showdown series with the Expos that Schmidt finally won with his 48th home run of the year in the 11th inning and tonight that's the man who made the critical mistake of this game thus far by his failure to walk Bob Boone in that second inning two balls and no strikes to Booney right center field playable there's Walling out number two now with two gone the pitcher spot comes up and Marty Bystrom will hit for himself Ruthven still throwing in the bullpen and it might be that he told Dallas Green if you're going to consider using me let me throw just a little bit more make sure that I'm ready Ruthven a starting pitcher might not be able to get loose as quickly as the relievers do there's a lot of difference between starting and relieving. 97 miles per hour on that one Donald how many home runs did you hit in this ballpark. I don't think any in this ballpark. There's a good curveball. ball 0 and 2 the count. I don't even think any in batting practice. <laughs> well we're already old by the time this ballpark was built. Oh no come on <laughs> now. <laughs> a little high. There you see Ryan trying to overthrow that breaking pitch just a little bender up there. One ball two strikes two outs nobody on and it's two to one Philadelphia in the top half of the fifth inning. Got him. Well, Ryan strikes out his seventh man and the Phillies go one two three in the fifth inning and after four and a half at the halfway mark. It's the Philadelphia Phillies two, the Houston Astros one. We are inside at the Astrodome in Houston, Texas. As you look at the top of the dome and moving down to a full house, there's our shot from above and set before 208 feet high, approximately 18 stories. As we go to the top of the Houston batting order, it'll be Terry Poole, Enos Cabell, and Joe Morgan in that order. Terry Poole two for two tonight two singles he scored the only Astro run that coming in the first inning on a two out double by Jose Cruz. Taking a little time right now we're waiting for the center fielder Gary Maddox to move out to his position he has yet to come out. And while he does that and takes a little time why they will extend a few more warm up tosses to Marty Bystrom. That tomorrow night on That's Incredible see one of the most amazing underwater stunts ever performed and a man who claims to have actual photographs of UFOs. That's incredible tomorrow night over most of these ABC stations. Here comes Gary. Now we're ready to go. Well, everybody gets a little nervous every now and then, and the Astros right now, they are trying to move themselves back into position. Gary Maddox moving to his position in center field, and you look down below and you see the Astro fans kind of squirming just a little bit. Four and a half in the books. It's two to one Philadelphia. Infield, outfield, about straight away. Maddox slightly in left center field. McBride deep and off the line and right. Schmidt inside the bag at third. There you see the Philadelphia defensive alignment for Terry Poole. Marty Bystrom in inning number five. That check swing foul. Owen won the count. Pitching coach, Merv Durrett over there making the play on that ball. He's got a eagle eye out on the youngster on the mound along with his manager Dallas Green. 
Did he go and attempt? And home plate umpire Eddie Vargo says yes, and Terry Poole is not too happy with that call. He's saying, did I attempt or was it a strike? And we'll look at it one more time. He came back with a breaking pitch. I don't know. It foul. Over by the Houston dugout. A lot of times hitters will complain about that and the umpire will say well how do you know you weren't even around to take a look at it. Cat remains 0 2. To Pete Rose he'll do it himself at number one. So they finally get pool out first time this evening. Let's see if Nystrom begins to settle down. And Enos Cabell stands in. He flies right. fly to right and he fouled out to the catcher. One out, Houston fifth, two to one, Philadelphia. The yep. Astros with five hits and the Phillies with four. Nystrom can skate. Island is Stanley Cup hero. <laughs> Nystrom's been skating on thin ice. Well, he's had some balls hit hard off of him, but he's managed to. Escape. There's a good fastball for a strike. Cabell talking about a pulled groin muscle prior to yesterday's game. He pulled it in the late innings in the first game here at the Astrodome. But he said it's really not too bad. He said it surprised me in the first inning yesterday when I had to go down the line hard at first base. Good breaking pitch right there. One ball, two strikes to count. Kids come a long way in a hurry from Miami Dade South Junior College. Well, he's a big youngster. He's 6'5, 200 pounds. Starting his professional career in 1977. Bounce third base side foul. Had that ball been fair, Mike Schmidt would have had a tough time getting Cabell. There he is, runners on base. That's zero. He's failed. Twice Poole led off with hits in the first and third innings, and Poole himself stole second in the first inning. Cabell moved him along neither time. Cat remains at one and two with one out. Phillies on top, two to one. Hit to the hole, base hit left field. Lazinski gets the ball back into Boa. So he gets his fifth hit with no one on, but they needed a hit. They need to get something started, trailing by a run, and once again, it's the little professional Joe Morgan who belted one about 400 feet, but it couldn't get out of it. And we get more That's action. Gulch. At Dead Man's Gulch here at the Astrodome. He hit it deep, 400 feet away, but Maddox hauled it down. Morgan has flied to Gary twice. Ruthman again, up and throwing in the bullpen. The Astro fans come alive, and they can be noisy. Bill Unser was saying prior to the game, along with Coach Billy DeMars, they had never in their life ever heard the noise that we heard here yesterday at the Astrodome. Warren Brewster up, he will start to throw. Ruth Brennan Knowles in the Philadelphia bullpen. Dickie Knowles acting as the guard man as Brewster moves alongside. High, the count goes to 2 0. Oh. The Astros trying to fight back. They have had to fight their way over the last week and a half to get here. There's the story of the men left on base. Side ball three, and the Astro fans up on their feet. Now they begin to get to it. Here and comes Dallas Bruce. Green. Comes out. Oh no, Merce Durrett, nope. right? Durrett. Coach. Dallas patted him on the back and told him go out and talk to him. Way down south in Houston, Texas, baseballs come alive. It has just that. There is pennant fever here in his great city. 
First of all, once Durrett, before he got to the mound, he'll talk to his catcher, Boone, and a lot of times they will do that. They want to get what they think is the real truth. Sometimes pitchers have a tendency where they might give a wishful answer instead of an accurate answer and a truthful answer. 71 pitches thrown by Bystrom so far. Three balls, no strikes to Morgan. The fans again on their feet. There's the strike. The youngster not thinking anything about the fan reaction right now. He's thinking about strikes. Three and one. One out, one on. Two to one Philadelphia. Bottom of the fifth. Runner go. Hit to the hole. Backhanded by Rose. And a great play by Pete. He's been doing that to Joe Morgan all series. Just a great play. Instant reflex. Look at it again. This one looks like it's going into right field. Had it, Cabell would have gone to third. But Rose with that stab. Look at it. Off his feet. Pete gets the same break that Manny Trio had in the first inning. And great reaction by Rose. They get Morgan with ease, but the tying run moves to second base and Cabell. And Jose Cruz will be the hitter. Both balls came up for him. The ball the Trio came up, that ball the Rose came up, and that made it so much easier. Suddenly, yesterday, the defenses became flawed. They are anything but that today bounces in the dirt and a fine play by Bob Boone to keep that ball in front of him and to keep Cabell at second base there it is again this curveball actually down at the feet of Cruz look at that play by Booney he's a good one that's Cabell at second he's the Tying run right now for the Astros. But they have two out. He's got some timely hits with runners in scoring position. Ground ball, trio over. And high! He can't make the play. Throw to the play! They get him! All right, they got him. They will be able to see that again. They got him because Cabell did not play heads up ball and running the bases. He slowed down. Coming from third to home. He was watching instead the play at first. Well, there's Drea. He pulls Rose off of the bag. Pete can't make the tag. Pete very alertly now coming to the plate. And they cut down Enos Cabell on a great block. All right, now watch Cabell. Watch him closely. He is looking over. Instead of running full out, he is looking over. He take costs himself extra territory, circling, and thus he got thrown out. After five, it's two to one Philadelphia. We'll be back after this word from our local stations. In the top of the sixth inning for Philadelphia, we go to the top of the order. Pete Rose, Bake McBride, and Mike Schmidt. The Phillies on top, two to one, as the innings start to wear away. Nolan Ryan has struck out seven right there in the only other two championship series that went five games in the 12 year history of the National League playoffs. Cincinnati beat Pittsburgh four to three in 1972. That curveball's low. And the New York Mets beat Cincinnati seven to two in 1973. One ball, one strike to Rose. He's one for two tonight. He struck out looking, and he singled in the third. One and two. Pete, like any hitter, sees that high breaking pitch, and he goes to Whaling. Count remains at one and two. The Phillies two runs four hits now one air and the Astros are run on six hits. Philadelphia has left one. The Houston Astros have left six. You've got to play and you've got to think every second in this game and this man exemplifies doing that. You just saw the reflex play on the ground. And then you saw how alertly he threw home. It was the opposition that let down and blew the opportunity. Right back to Ryan. 
Pete says, all right, you got me, pal. He hits right. a rope. Let's let's look at this play again. Look at that reflex action by Ryan. And the ball stuck. Well, with one gone and Bake McBride will stand in. He's fly to left and struck out. If diamond situation permit, we're going to take you back. And we're going to look down from the gondola on Bake McBride as he, uh, rather, on Enos Cabell as he followed what might be termed the Nolan Ryan route that Nolan showed in game two. A little low with a fastball. 99 miles per hour. That's what that pitch was. Little low ball too. Two balls and no strikes, one out. Cabell having to come in inside the bag at third. Ryan to drop one down, trying to go that way and misses a count two and one. There you see Cabell. Reynolds was over to his left. And with a pitch, Craig moving just a shade to his right. We'll watch to see where he goes back to line up. Foul left side, 2 to the count. There's no tomorrow for one of these two teams. Go back to that play. You see Cabell and you see him run full circle. Extra ground. You saw him looking over as he turned toward first base, watching on the play that Rose was executing. And so he was thrown out. You can't give away those opportunities. Here's Mike Schmidt. He's popped to first. He actually fouled out to Howell and he struck out. 0 for 2 tonight. Nice camera work, guys. That was very that people now can see exactly what you're talking about, Howard, and making that little skater's turn around third base. He did not cut it at all. Terrible mistake to look over to first. It's like a jockey looking. Halfway behind him, down the stretch. One ball and no strikes account. Two and zero. Oh. That's some great shots from that overhead camera up here in the gondola at the Astrodome. Denny Lewin, our producer, Joe Assetti, our director, and all of our cameramen and technicians. They have really done an outstanding job. Quite an interesting shot from that. High upstairs camera up in the gondola, not really upstairs. Across the catwalk and across the roof here at the Astrodome. Right there, the breaking pitch. He would not give in with a fastball, and the count goes to two and one. Mike looking for a pitch that he might be able to drive a little bit. And there's good discipline in a hitter. Ball three. Ryan stumbling coming off of the mound that time. A little bit exasperated with himself. Now we pan up to show you where our gondola shot actually is. There it acts right at the top. Boy, I'll tell you. And that this is, is what, what he's he looking sees. at yep. along with you at home. Looped into shallow right center. Morgan going out, still going out. Makes a catch going away. Now Joe Morgan able to run that one down, and the Phillies are going in the six, three up, three down. As you look at it one more time, didn't hit it that hard, but Morgan runs it down. And after five and a half, it's two to one. Philadelphia. That's the line score as we go to the bottom of the sixth inning. 
There's the Philadelphia bullpen on the right. Brewster on the left. Big Ron Reed. Astros bullpen. There's Forsh. Ryan will be the fifth hitter this inning. And that is what Bill Verdon is thinking about. Denny Walling to lead it off. He is 0 for 2. He's hit the ball hard twice. Trio made a fine play on him, and then McBride ran his drive down to right. 0 and 1. Walling looked at Ed Vargo as if to say, You take the bat, you try and hit that pitch. Breaking pitch a little low. One ball, one strike. Then he drove in the winning run. Here in the opening game at the Astrodome. Two balls and a strike. The Astros get a base runner or two, and this crowd will come alive again. They've been going wild even on a three ball count. But that young man, Marty Feistrom, has stayed right there. To left field. The bull moving over. Can't get it off this ball. Walling to second base, and he turns. He will hold right there. That ball was slicing back on Luzinski, and it came off the top of his glove. He actually overran the ball, it appears. So he did, and they've had defensive problems in left field. Here it is coming right at you. Watch it. Yes, he did. He overran the ball. That ball with a left-hander hitting it to the opposite field. And in the alley, that ball is going to be slicing back. It's coming back on. See Lewis. that? That's an excellent shot of it. Well, the Astros get a break. Yesterday it was Lonnie Smith in left field. Just then it was Luzinski. And they give Luzinski an air. Here's Art Howe. Well, that's the first Philadelphia flaw today. No second, really. That's right. Manny Trio Manny made the Trio error on the throw. throw. But Philadelphia negated that one on the same play because of Cabell's careless running. How the curveball high. The fans again come alive. The Astrodome ringing inside. How has one thing in mind. He's going to try, if he can, to move the runner to third with Reed and Brewster throwing in the bullpen. Force throwing in the bullpen for the Astros. He was not trying to move him over on that swing. That's 80 pitches by Beister. One ball and one strike. A young man who now makes his home in Miami, Florida, trying to battle these Astros as the fans come alive again and time is called. Powell wants to. Take a little breather. It's astonishing that every game since the first game has been in this pattern. Back and forth. The game hanging in the balance. Inside and the count goes to two and one. You think that there aren't some stomachs churning in both dugouts and also sitting around in the stands. Two balls, a strike, nobody out. The tying run at second base in the name of Denny Waller. Pulled foul. Two and two the count. Dallas Green. Always surveying that entire field. Checking out everything. It's bullpen busy. Dallas. Tells you what the Astros want as they get up the chant. We want a hit. Two balls and two strikes. Bounce foul. Well, now Art Howell is just for himself. Now he's got to try and stay alive as you look at the Houston dugout. Burn rule yesterday's pitcher Joe Morgan Look at Morgan. Morgan on the steps. He and Petey Rose in a way are replicas each of the other. Old pros. 
Indomitable. The infield, outfield, about straight away for Hal. Luzinski very deep in left field. That's the storyline. Side rose over to take a look. He'll run out of room. Out of play. Two and two the count. The man that's had himself quite a championship series. There's Murph Sturrett as you look in. Dallas Green, the taller of the three. His lieutenant, Bobby Wine, right alongside. Bobby Wine, who almost went. Crazy yesterday on that triple play that became a double play. There was a lot of people that almost went crazy. Now Booney. Booney trying to settle Bystrom down. Hey, let's have an idea what we want to do right here. The first and, rookie. Yep. And he has lived dangerously, but he has escaped. 36 innings of Major League Baseball before this start tonight. The fans again come to their feet. Jammed him. Mike Schmidt has a play. He will go to Rose. They hold the runner at second base. And it was a marvelous pitch. How could do nothing with it. He never hit it to right field. He never advanced the runner. Verdon disdain the bunt, and there could be some talk about that depending on the flow of events. Here it is again. Look at that fastball tail in on him, and Howe just fighting it off of him, trying to guard the plate. Mike Schmidt moving right into the baseline with a runner walling at second as he throws out the runner at first. Howe, and now Hal and Ashby will come to the plate in place of Louis Pujols. They have missed Ashby. They haven't missed him as much behind the plate as they would over a longer period of time. Verdon credits Ashby with having virtually made the Houston pitching staff, but they sure missed him, for instance, in the second inning of this game when Pujols was thrown out at home on what would have been a triple by Craig Reynolds, who scored as a double, a brilliant relay. For Three out, three out to move. Ashby hitless in five trips to the plate in the championship series. Takes the fastball outside. That this is, was his kind of situation during the season, Donald. That's right, and that's what Billy Burton is thinking about right now. Walling remaining at second base. Third ball for the strike, and the count evens at one. One ball, one strike, one out, one on. And it's two to one Philadelphia in the bottom of the sixth inning. The tying run at second base in Denny Walling. Now, of course, Ashby hurt the rib that sidelined him in this series in the Ferguson crash last Monday in Dodger Stadium. Two and one. Boone again will go to the mound to talk to young Bystrom just to talk about location and think about the next pitch. Think what you're going to do. When I talked with Ashby about the rib and the Ferguson crash, he smiled and said, I've got to take some of the blame myself. I should have known better than to charge into that big guy. <laughs> he did hit a big guy, just like Rose hit a big guy yesterday, but Bochy didn't wasn't able to hold on to the ball. Up the middle, that's a base hit. Here comes Maddox. Here comes Walling. They've got to play at the plate. The throw is not in time. Walling limping off in a 2 2 tie. So, as we look at it again, Ashby, who has done it so many times this year, you saw his record with runners in scoring positions does it now and we're back all even as the pattern of this incredible championship series continues Walling Walling it is and what a play Maddox made he made a great play and he made a great throw 
but Walling can move, and Walling ran. Did you see him cut that corner? Watch this from overhead. Now you'll see a man striding, and you'll see a man attending to his business. Look at how he cuts that turn compared with what you saw from Cabell earlier. And the third base coach, Don Leppard, doing an excellent job moving down the line. A coach can help you so much by getting in position as you see the throw come. And you couldn't draw a straighter line from Gary Maddox to Bob Boone. A pitching change, that's all for Marty Bystrom. A 2-2 tie. We're in the bottom of the sixth, and we'll be right back. There's the new pitcher, Warren Brewster. Now let's watch that last play. There is Maddox. He comes up with a great throw. Now watch the flight of the ball. Seething cutoff man in perfect position, which explains why Ashby could not take second. A ball could have been cut off. Ashby could have been picked off. But the throw, so low, right on a line, he let it go through, chancing the play at the plate. Here is Craig Reynolds. He's one for two tonight. He doubled, he bounced to second. Now the go-ahead run at first base in a 2-2 tie. Schmidt inside the bag at third. Rose holding Ashby at first. The outfield, Maddox slightly in left center. Luzinski to the line and left. McBride about straight away right, so they give the alley in right center field. The infield, double play depth. Up the middle. Brewster won yesterday's game. Two and all. Oh. You think some eyes don't get big in a championship series? It's all on the line. Nobody throwing now in the Astro bullpen. Ryan will hit for himself. That's what it suggests. Left center field playable Maddox taking charge and that is out number two. Now Ashby returning to first base Bobby Lillis over talking to him just reminding him that there's two outs and you go on anything as Nolan Ryan will come to the plate. Ryan has bounced the short and struck out. That pinch hit by Alan Ashby. That was the first Houston pinch hit of this series. Their pinch hitters are now one for six. But what a big one it was. One ball, no strikes to Ryan. Don't take him lightly. He can hurt you if you think he's an automatic guy. Not only that, he can hurt you with power. And a near home run to right field in Philadelphia, remember? That's right. High ball two. That's what they say. Whoops. Yep. Two balls and no strikes. Nolan Ryan from Alvin, Texas, and they say don't throw the country boys high. <laughs> he will jump all over it. Quick throw and Ashby back just in time. Booney will turn it loose a little bit. Rose was just in a little ways from first base. Ashby off there a little bit. See, they almost catch him going the wrong way. Now Rose is inside the bag, and Ashby just back in time. Right field. McBride a long way to go, but he can run it down. So Ryan drives it up the alley. The Astros are gone in the sixth inning, but they come back with a very big run and unearned run to tie it through six. It's a two-two tie. There's the new catcher, Keith. Alan Ashby It's going to be interesting now. He's got that rib problem. How it's going to affect his throwing. He has an excellent arm. So we get ready to go to the seventh inning of play. I'm Don Drysdale with Howard Cosell and Keith Jackson and another wild one here at the eighth wonder of the world. We have seen something from the Astrodome. And to the seventh, once again, here's Keith. Okay, Big D, and we're looking at the ball, Greg Luzinski. Whose error in left field cost the Phillies the lead in the ball game. He 
He's got some atoning to do. Trio to follow, then Maddox. And Nolan Ryan starts on the turn, strike one. Ryan struck out Luzinski looking both times tonight, and both times on a breaking pitch. Rolls that one to the right side in the hole, right field, base hit for the ball. The reason he rolled it to the right, being basically a pulled hitter, is very simply this the ball came to him at 98 miles an hour. That'll make you hit it to the opposite field somewhere. <laughs> he just, it showed his strength though, too, Keith. That ball was from the middle of the plate in a little bit, and he just fought it off of him and just moved it over there to the right side. Now you've got it appears. Larry Christensen throwing in the bullpen. Manny Trio, we're going to have a pinch runner. And it appears that it will be Lonnie Smith, Lonnie Smith. possibly going out to run for Luzinski. And Trio, a tough cookie for Ryan so far tonight. He's two for two. A tough cookie throughout this championship series. So Lonnie Smith, with great speed, goes to first base in left field yesterday. He was involved in a rather bizarre happening as the ball rolled out of his hand on a throw. He escaped without an error because the runner kept going and he chased the ball down to throw him out at third. It's a play he practiced at Oklahoma City. <laughs> I was talking with Dallas Green. I said, I, I couldn't help but laugh, Dallas. I, I said, I tried not to on the air, and I said, I hope you, if you tell Lonnie that he heard me laugh, I tell him I didn't mean. He said, I was laughing myself. He said, but I, he says it's not funny, but he says, you got to laugh. All right, trio at the plate. Ryan to the stretch. Smith off first. Not a big lead. Slides up the bat handle, and it's a strike on the outside corner. Boy, he had something on that trio. Now, once again, he's going to check with his third base coach, Lee Elia. He had Cabell shaking hands with him at third, and how the same way at first. There's Lee. Smith still not on the rug. Now he's creeping out, trying to hook his lead foot on the carpet. The bunt is put down. Foul on the first base side. It used to be when the Astrodome was first built and you came in here, you could stand at home plate. And you could roll a ball a few inches inside the line down at third, a few inches inside the line down at first, as you look at Dallas Green. You know that ball would end up? It would end up halfway between the mound and the, yeah. and the line. Yeah. That's how much it was tilted. Yeah. Well, ground keepers will tail the ballpark. Kansas City ballpark is tailored by one of the smartest ground keepers in baseball. Where Two strike pitch about? right here. Hit in the air to center field. Pools on his horse. Now he waits for it. One out. Runner remains at first. Lonnie Smith had thoughts about going to second base, but what stopped him from going to second base is he saw the flight of the ball. The ball was hit pretty good. He got about, well, just about halfway to second base, and then he thought, well, I'm going to go back and tag. Well, then it's too late. By the time he got back to the bag, Poole had made the catch, and he's got a gun on him. He just rifled a strike to second base. Money might have had to take the bus back if he'd have tried to go to second. Well, the thing, out. if he got back quicker, Keith, the thing that would have made it possibly a probable play is that Poole was going away from the play. Hard shot at third, Cabell one, Morgan to first, two. What a play by Morgan. Once again on the turnover, Lonnie Smith is lined to tear a leg off of him. And look at it one more time. Ryan. With that ground ball, one hopper to Cabell. He doesn't give it to Morgan real hard, but look at Smith. Watch the bounce at first. How scoops and gets him, and we're all even in the dome. Larry Christensen comes in now. Larry, the third Philadelphia pitcher. He was the starter in game three. And in that game, he pitched six innings, gave up only three hits, walked four. Greg Gross to left field. Smith does not go out there. It's Gross. And I believe what he's done right here, Keith, he's made the double switch. He's got Christensen hitting in the fourth spot because you're down to the eighth inning if you're manager Dallas Green. And he's got Gross hitting in the ninth spot. So he's got a hitter down there, and then he can make his move if he has to once Christensen's spot comes up. Crowd chanting Houston Astros. You've heard them doing it ever since. We came back to Houston. So 
Christensen gets the top of the Houston batting order in the bottom of the seventh inning. Poole, the Bell, Morgan. Houston with a run in the bottom of the first. Philadelphia two runs at the top of the second. Houston answers at the bottom of the sixth. Ryan gets Philadelphia top of the seventh. And now Poole is up two for three. The pitch is inside. Ball one. Going to be interesting to see the sharpness of Larry Christensen. This is a risky move by Dallas Green. Larry went six innings. Now we'll take another peek at that last pitch. That got a piece of Eddie Vargo. Off of the glove, up. It appears it got Vargo on the right arm. He's going down in the Houston dugout. And the other senior member of this umpiring crew coming down from right field, down the right field line, yesterday's home plate umpire, Doug Harvey. Doug again. Harvey. They will go down and make sure that Eddie Fargo's okay. He walked off in a hurry. Boy, he's a tough little cookie. Some of the Houston players going over to see exactly what happened. There's a look. The trainer working on Fargo. It appeared that it got him on the right arm. And those, probably putting the ethyl chloride on. They hurt. Especially when it's off the bare skin like that. That's right. That's one thing you don't have to worry about here at the Astrodome. They say it's 72 degrees, the wind blowing one mile at from the north, east, south, and west. He's shaking, isn't he? He is. He got it pretty good. He's holding his right hand, so apparently that's where he bit him. I can remember Al Barley, great umpire in the National League, and now one of the supervisors as he brought this young man along right here as we're just coming up to the major league. He made him into one of the fine umpires in the National League and in all of baseball. He knew Eddie was hurting a little bit. He just dropped that mask and moved over to the dugout. He said, Somebody take a look at it. It got him right on the hand. Yep, looks like it. He worked his first National League game April of 1960. Been around a while. Two years ahead of Harvey. There's that right, that like right pinky. Little, little finger. Looks Look at how small it is. May have broken it. It might have, might have dislocated it. He's tough. He is a tough hombre and a great umpire. Well, he's going to gut it out. Oh, yeah, you won't get him out of there. Christensen ready, works to pool, and the pitch is low inside, two balls and one strike. Right field, base hit, pool. He's three out of four. He has been simply amazing in this series. We haven't been able to keep him off the bases. He's quite there's this guy to sign on Nolan Ryan. Go get him, Nolan. Alvin loves you, of course, Ryan from Alvin, Texas. Now, this is the man who's been having problems, Donald, with man on base. Let's see how Verdon plays this. But getting back to Terry Poole, said yesterday that there's a youngster that just gets better and better and yeah. better and better. He's Look out 300 next year. Oh, boy. Oh, sure. All relates. Well, you heard the admiration, Keith, with which the Reds spoke of him before the game today. All relates to his strength buildup, his determination to get his body up to maximum physical condition. Cabell not good considered time. a good bunner. This one's a dandy. And Rose has to pick it up between first and the mound and throw the trio. And Keith, we get more action in the Philadelphia bullpen. Big right-hander Ron Reed, he's up and throwing one more time. And they've got the man up, they want up. Little Joe. 
Poole at second and Morgan up. Little Joe was robbed by Little Pete the last time up. Little Joe hit one 400 feet that appeared that it might go out if anything can go out of this Astrodome. Right here, if you're Larry Christensen, you've got to say to yourself, I don't know who I want to try and beat me, Morgan or Cruz, but I'm going to pitch Morgan awfully careful because I still have first base open. He gets his fastball on the outside corner for a strike. You're not getting uh, an out if you do pitch around him with Cruz. Fouled away, and Christensen's out on top. Two strikes. Well, here's where you got to try and come up with your A number one best Sunday pitch. Well, I don't know what else. Not necessarily on this particular pitch, but you've got to count 0 and 2, and you've got a chance to really work on him now for a couple of pitches. Schmidt over, cuts it off, chases the runner back, throws out Morgan. Two down. Well, you saw Joe try to go to the opposite field. Well, he pitched him away, and the thing that enabled Schmidt to get to the ball was it the infield and the outfield for Morgan. They blame the pull. So consequently, when they do that, Schmidt's going to be off the line. Right, now this, I said earlier that we had the exactly opposite pattern from what we've had in the preceding games of the series tonight, and that graphic proves the point. Intentional pass here to Jose Cruz. They'll pitch to Wally. Walling in the ball game. Remember, he's the fellow that hit that slicing liner that Luzinski overran and couldn't flag down for a two base error. That's the fourth intentional pass to Cruz in the series. The eighth time that he has walked, Terry Poole is out at second base. He now has nine hits in this championship series. Here's Denny Walling. Just unbelievable the way these two teams have gone at one another. Well, a short series can even out all kinds of things when you start to go into it and you look at teams on record and on paper. With two out, Walling, time call Froming, rhyming in from left field, calling time. Bruce Froming, you were talking about him, Howard, looking like Don Nottingham. He took off yelling with both arms over his head and he took off like that. <laughs> he come charging in from left field. He thought someone was chasing him. All right, whatever it was has been removed and now we're ready. Christensen to Walling. Hit the right field, base hit. Here comes Poole around third. And the throw through is all the way through. And Cruz goes to third. Astros get the lead. I said it was a gambling move on Dallas Green's part to put Larry Christensen in. He had worked hard and long enough the other day. There's a fastball out over the plate. This ball hit by Trio, no chance. McBride really didn't have a chance because Terry Poole is supplying the gas right now as he comes around third. It's a strong throw. Look at the decoy by Rose, but to no avail. The runner goes from first to third. Cruz at first base is Walling, and it's three to two, Houston. Here's Cruz, who checked over his shoulder to see where the throw was going. When he saw it going toward the plate, he just kept right on ripping it to third. There is no containing this crowd now. The batter is Art Howe. But remember yesterday and the Phillies eighth. Bounces, gets away from Boone. Cruz coming to the plate. Scores. What a big run this is. Here's a sinker. It appeared down in the dirt. He tried to get on top. Booney had hit the plate. It could not make a play on it. A desperation throw to Christensen to no avail. Cruz scores. And what a play and what a run. 
Here comes Cruz one more time, striding right down the line. He's not going anywhere except as quickly as he can to home plate. Christensen coming in to cover. The throw not nearly in time. And a big, big run for the Astros. Walling at second base and Dallas Green to the mound. The wild pitch allowing the run to cross. And the pitching change will now be made. The gamble with Christensen did not pay off. So Ron Reed comes in to relieve while he warms up. Let us take this time out. 4 2 Astros. The fourth Philadelphia pitcher, Reed in to pitch to Howe. And Howe hits the ball to right center field. It's in the gap. Going through, going to the wall. Here comes Walling to the plate. Here goes Howe around third. And he'll hold there. Yesterday, I remarked that this team reminded me of the Mets of 1969. Today, Joe Morgan said before the game that loss yesterday will give us more confidence. We're the kind of team that responds to pressure. We seem to need it. We've been the same way all year long. Here we look at it again as Ron Ray gets a pitch up over the plate and Howe drives it deep to the alley, slicing away from Maddox. And by the time Maddox and McBride can move to the ball, Art Howe was standing at third with a triple. He comes out of the ball game, and Bergman goes in to run for him. And there are some happy Astros. Landis Toy working in the bullpen. You can expect him to come in for defensive purposes for Joe Morgan. Ashby the batter. And Houston has jumped on him for three in the bottom of the seventh to lead five to two. Here is the man who has a pinch hitter tied it up. That's a strike to Alan Ashby. Two strikes on him. Well, if you planned on coming to Houston, don't do it right away because they're going to have a party down here unless something terribly dramatic happens on the part of the Philly. There's the pitch. One and two. Well, there's another good play by Bob Boone. He's battling back there now. There's Bergman at third. That's the runner, the pitch runner for Art Howe. Dave Bergman. He'll probably stay and play first. He did the last time we saw it. That's hit in the air on the left side. The left fielder Gross coming over. Greg makes the catch, and the inning is over. But three big, big, big runs for the Astros. They lead 5-2. And we'll be back with more of the fifth game of the National League Championship Series between the Phillies and Astros after this word from our local station. Defensive changes for Houston. Rafael Landestoy at second base. And Dave Bergman is over at first base with Howe and Morgan leaving the lineup. Well, Philadelphia used this, the eighth inning yesterday, to come back. They were trailing by two. The extraordinary events of that evening have been recounted to you not once, but several times tonight. Let's see if there's any comeback now left in the fills. They have to do it against one of the great pitches, regardless of his 11 and 10 season. Bottom of the order, Boa, Boone, and Gross. And he's low to ball, ball one. Ryan, starting this inning, Keith has thrown 95 pitches. That was the same as he threw in game number two. There's a strike. And you don't give this big guy on the mound a lead going into the eighth or ninth inning because he's held that lead well over 100 times in his career. That's a little looper, and it's past Reynolds, and Boa's on with a single. Now, the way this series has gone, you can expect anything. Yeah, there's a lot of heart out there and a lot of people. <laughs> and two catchers trotting down to the Houston bullpen. Joe Sambito trots out behind them, and they'll, he'll be followed by somebody else, probably Dave Smith, or is that see who that's going down? It's Forsh. 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 Ken Henry right. Forsh. Here's Boone with Boa on first. Back off the pitcher's glove. There'll be no play. 
That's the break they needed to keep this thing going. What a break. You're right, Howard. Would have been an easy double play. That's got to be a double play. Ryan going off to the first base side, but it's right there, but behind him just a little bit. His body was turned around. He was not in position and then could not make the play. How does it go on and on this way? All right, here's Gross coming up now. And Gross, been in three games. This is where two Dallas, for two. This is where Dallas made that double switch. Now you've yep. got Gross hitting in the ninth spot. Now you see where he made an anticipatory move that works out. That's Force the right-hander and Sambito the left-hander. Two on, nobody out. Top of the eighth inning. The bunt down the third base line. Cabell slipped, got no start on it at all, and Ryan can't make the play. Cabell was trapped at third. What a play! Is look at Dallas Green. What a bunt. Now you've got the bases loaded, you, the tying runs aboard, and I, you couldn't lay that ball out there You any can't better. script what's happened in this series. Do you believe this? It took less than three minutes. They got the bases filled, none out, against so great a pitcher as Nolan Ryan. At third, Boa. At second, Boone. And at first, Gross. And tomorrow, the first base coach run all, running all the way out to second to talk to Boone. Now he comes back. And here's Mr. Trouble, Pete Rose. The Felds, who have never won a championship series, if they lose now, nobody can call them chokers. Nobody can call them quitters. They don't knuckle under, and they have. BD is one for three in the ball game tonight. Nobody out the bases full. Ryan's pitch foul back. They've got the right guy up. And look who's throwing in the Philadelphia bullpen. Left-hander Tug McGraw. There he is. There's the Tugger. I don't believe this series. <laughs> it's just incredible. Pitch is eye high. One and one. Boa started the inning with a single over the shortstop's head. Boone hit a single off Ryan's glove. Gross, absolutely perfect punt. Cavell was totally dead at third, could make no play. Ryan didn't have time to get to it. That's how the bases got loaded. And it's high. Two and one. 99 mile an hour fastball on the jugs gun. Here's where Nolan has to take a little walk and have a little clubhouse meeting with himself and not try an overthrow. He's still got great velocity. He's just got to stay within himself. He's got to throw strikes. There's no place to put him. 5-2, Houston lead. Big break off third by Boer. Pitch to Rose. Foul back. Two and two. Boy, Larry Boer came 30 feet down the line. But you know he's not going to try and steal right now. Not with this club three runs behind and the bases loaded. The tying runs aboard. How quickly they fill those bases. Here's watch Boa. It. Watch this. What Donald now Ryan spoke comes into of. his windup. Two, two to Rose. Close, but it's ball three, three and two. Well, you think this guy doesn't make you work? Nothing but trouble ahead. McBride, there are the Astros. Burden still, the expression unchanged. Out of the plate. Count remains three and two on Rose. That was another 99 mile an hour fastball. Did you ever throw it that fast? No. I was around 94. That was us. They did that. The only time they did that, they didn't have all of the. Didn't the have fancy it when you were a young huh? No. <laughs> they had. They did that with sequence cameras. They did that down in Miami one year. They could have fibbed a little bit. I don't know. <laughs> All right, back to work. 3 2. Base is loaded, nobody out. That's outside, ball four, forces in a run. 5 3 ball game. And here comes Billy Burton. Base is still loaded, nobody out. Base runners are now Boone, Gross, and Rose. 
five three game Ryan I'd like to have that bouncer back that Boone hit to him I know that that was the key to setting up Sam Vito is coming in no he took the loss yesterday You know, right now he's a little bit dejected. No question about that. Bill Verdon talking with Sam Vito, just explaining what the situation is. And it's this the bases are loaded. There's Nolan down in the dugout. It's now five to three. You have the tying runs in scoring position, the go ahead run in the name of Pete Rose at first base. And I have, it appears that they will. They're going to take McBride out. He will not hit. So Keith Moreland's out there so swinging far, about. As you look at Sam Beto for Nolan Ryan, undoubtedly thinking about that double play ground to hit back to him. Nolan's body turned, the ball a touch behind him, unable to pick it off and start what appeared would be a certain double play. You got Keith Moreland now, a catcher, standing in the on deck circle, swinging a bat, loosening up. Sam Beto is on the mound. Let's see if Bill Verdon will shuffle his deck one more time and change his mind. He's had Kenny Forsh out of the bullpen warming up alongside of Sam Beto. Sam Beto has struck out six in the series so far in his appearances. He's been in two games, three and a third innings. And he had been particularly rough on Mike McBride. So McBride lifted for Moreland. Now the one thing he might love to be able to change his mind right now Keith but he can't Sam Beto has to pitch to at least one man has to go to one man just when it appeared destiny had the but Astros. after Moreland comes uh, the big guy that's, that's true. right and Mike Schmidt and then after Schmidt you have the pitcher spot so undoubtedly you're going to have a pinch hitter right there if they get that far you've got Tug McGraw still throwing in the Philadelphia bullpen. But just when it appeared that the Astros were destined, back came this team, which will not knuckle under. Keith Morland's first appearance in the championship series. He's a youngster out of the University of Texas. Mike Schmidt to the on deck circle. Nobody out, one run in, bases are loaded. Sambito pitches to Nolan, gets a strike. The runners are Boone at third, Gross at second, and Pete Rose at first. That's a little interesting figure right there. Ball is hit in the crowd to the right side. Right handed hitter actually hitting better against right handed pitching than left handed pitching. There's the man that may force Bill Verdon to make another decision. And he must be doing a lot of thinking with only <laughs> one run batted in in this series. Well, regardless of that, Howard, he's going to make Bill Verdon think. You know that. Wallen steps out on Sam Vito. Two strikes the count. Nobody out. Jams him inside. 5 2 lead. Going to the top of the eighth inning for the Astros. Flying high. Getting three big runs at the bottom of the seventh. They seem so secure with Nolan Ryan. Great velocity tonight. But. The single by Boa. The single off the pitcher's glove by Boone. The bunt single by Gross. The walk to Rose. Tapped on the ground. Second baseman. Landestor whips it over to second. That's the only play they've got. And it's a 5 2 4 ball game now. And the tension just grows as the crowd quiets down. The base runner's there. They wiped out. The man coming down from second. Here is Forsch now and Lacordi. 
available for Bill Burton. So we'll see who gets the call. It may well be Forsh as he comes out to the pitching mound. Rose wiped out on the force at second. Not Rose, uh, Gross. No, that you're right. Pete Rose was wiped out on the on the force at second base. Bob Boone scored. Gross is. That's right. Standing over at third right now, Keith, and they will go. It appears they'll go to force. He'd been there the longest. He's been throwing a couple of times, so Sam Beto. He does his job to get his man. He gets the one out, but now the Phillies all of a sudden they come back to draw within one. And there he is, the man who led the world. And well, we won't go so far as that because I'm not sure. I didn't check lately what Mr. O did over in Japan, but as far as Major League Baseball is concerned, Mike Schmidt had 48 home runs this year, and that led it all. They're in the position of needing a fly ball. For 18 innings, they thirsted for one and they couldn't get one. They must have it now, at least. A hit would be better, sure. Now we're back to that all important inning that so many people have talked about. When your team scores, if you could go back out and hold. Them. We're going to get a pinch runner at first base also for the Philadelphia Phillies. Ramon Aviles. Aviles in for Moreland at first. Gross at third. The world is watching Mike Schmidt right now as Ken Forsch warms up the third Houston pitcher. Again to recap the stop of the eighth inning. Boa let off with a single over the shortstop. Moon a scratch off the pitcher's glove. Perfect bunt by Gross for a single. Rose walked a run scored. Fielder's choice. They went to second on Moreland, the pinch hitter. Another run scored. Boone from the third base. And we are at 5-4 with Dell Unser out in the on-deck circle to hit in the pitcher's spot. Right now, Kenny Force has got to work with Mike Schmidt. One out. Runners at the corner. Swing and a miss. Strike one. <laughs> Unbelievable. I've never seen three baseball games like these last I three. I, Keith, I can't remember when I've seen this kind of a series. Last three have just been incredible. Strike two. Now Force can work with it. Oh, if he gets Schmidt, they'll blow the roof off this place. Gonna get under something protective. He's got a tough cookie in that on deck circle though and Dale Hunters. He does. But he gets Schmidt. He's got two out. Picture of Mike Schmidt. Boy, that pitch, that pitch was just unbelievable. Right there. Here is Unser now with two out and the tying run at third. But this is a good contact hit. It's a base hit to right center, and we're tied at five. And around the third goes the base runner. That's Aviles running in place of Moreland. And now 
the Phillies have the go ahead run at third. Well if ever a team has proved itself to have courage if ever a team has answered every knock that it took. Same old Phillies huh. This team has done it. People of Philadelphia can feel proud of it. Win or lose. And come back yesterday. This incredible comeback now. Now Manny Trio is at the plate with the go-ahead run on third. Foul back. Trio with two singles. He scored a run. It's interesting just sitting back and thinking how they've been pitching Trio in this particular series they have not made him hit the breaking pitch whatsoever they've stayed try to stay with a fastball on him. curveball down the left field line base hit going to the corner run scores from third Phillies get the lead balls loose in the corner here comes another run around the turn and banging into the plate and over to third goes Manny Trio as Gross came all the way around and the Phillies have scored five runs in the eighth inning. It's one of the greatest comebacks you will ever see in baseball. In a park that is harder to score runs in than any other park in Major League Baseball. Starting the inning against one of baseball's greatest pitchers, Nolan Ryan. Never giving up. Manny Trio, two singles and a triple in the game tonight. Well, well, let's take another look at it. There's a breaking pitch. He hung it inside, and Trio just hits it right down the line. That's one run scoring the tying run obviously they say kick the bat out of there the ball gets by the left fielder and goes all the way to the corner and by the time they move it back in they put the appeal play on and the third base umpire that is Terry Tatus says no but by the time they got it all back in and the dust had settled Lunzer had scored and here comes Billy Verdon one more time. Frank LaCorte has been in the bullpen. Ken Forsh is not able to do it. Sam Vito was not able to do it. Ryan seemingly had everything in the palm of his hand with a 5 2 lead going to the top of the eighth inning. Think of the flow of this inning alone, the shifting tides. Forsh apparently sharp, striking out Mike Schmidt, the home run king, with an absolutely perfect pitch. Then Dell Unser simply meeting the ball, turning the hands over, pulling it to right for a single. And now this from Trio. Burden leaves Forsh. Score is now Philadelphia seven and Houston five. There's the bull. He's gone in and changed. He's got his workout jersey on. He's back out rooting Steve Carlton right alongside. The batter is Maddox. Swings and misses. Strike one. There got was two a, out. The trios at third. There was a picture from our vantage point here, shooting down to that Philly dugout. It's just like a row of Jaybirds kind of sitting out there watching what's going on. Maddox fouls it away for strike two. Every pitch they move up to the bar. After every pitch, they move back. They walk around. Then they find another hole. They go back up and take another view. Now watch him. Hit in the air and sailing back out of play. On the right side. This is a big inning, Keith. With nine men have come to the plate. I think this is the biggest inning we've biggest had. Biggest inning we've had. Meantime, Houston with two turns at bat left. And now without Howe and Joe Morgan. Two strike pitch to Maddox. Hit in the air to center field for Terry Poole. That should do it. But the Phillies bat around against Nolan, Sambito, and Porsche. And they score five runs. 
And the crowd that was so exultant in the bottom of the seventh is quiet in the top of the eighth. Tuck McGraw is on the mound for the Phillies. He's been in all five of the championship games. Tug McGraw. Dale Unser has gone to play right field. Tug is the first, as you see, to appear in all five in a playoff series. There's Unser. Seven to five, and the crowd is in shock, as I am sure the Astros are in shock, and many millions of you are in shock. Five two lead. It looks so sound. Well, I know the viewers that have been following us for all five games, Keith, they got to be saying the same thing that we've said. Can you believe it? <laughs> now what? Well, it's baseball, little things. A ground ball from Bob Boone that should have been a double play, but wasn't. An unlikely hero in Dell Unser. All right, it's Craig Reynolds. Gary Woods out in the pitcher spot, and then Terry Poole. Laporte in the bullpen. Or Houston staying there. At Soche and Dickie Knowles in the Philadelphia bullpen. Reynolds a double on the game tonight in three trips. Pitch, all one. Tug gets the strength to throw from. He stayed loose. He went to bed last night and got up this morning and he's loose. <laughs> and for a while, your arm just kind of stays that way, Howard. It doesn't take that long to get it going. Somewhere along the line, you get a little bit of reserve. And in a game like this, it's going to be there. One ball, two strikes. On Craig Reynolds. Well, right now the Astros they got to get that adrenaline going again. They had it. They had a five to two lead, but all of a sudden it rolled over to the Philly dugout. They picked it up. The Astros you can't say they're out of it. They've got two more whacks at them. We've seen funnier things happen. Two pitch to Reynolds, leadoff hitter. Broken bat, roller up the middle. Trio goes over, flags it, no play. Reynolds on. Do we go again? <laughs> <laughs> well, that is just taking a, a bat right there and just breaking it in half. And again, that old story that you hear in this game having eyes McGraw looking at the barrel of the bat going by trying to look at the ball going by trio had Reynolds played the pull went over backhanded the ball you can't count this out as no play because Manny's got a great arm but he says nope not with Reynolds running I can't make the play Gary Woods at the plate in the pitcher spot to hit Terry Poole on deck Woods had a home run here off Bob Shirley hit it in the seats in left field two for seven in this championship series over two against McGraw McGraw struck him out one time strike Good swing. It's not a big, great big arc, but he's got a he's got a compact swing. Not a big hitch to it or anything like that. Time called to get the ball. It got loose out of the bullpen. A 
Space Civil War here right there. Foul back. Two strikes on Wood. He's had two pitches to hit off a tug. The only thing that might happen right now if McGraw's a little bit tired and Tug might realize it without telling anybody he kids about it. He might try and press just a little bit to get some velocity there. When you do that, you come out of your pitching rhythm and then you don't make the real good pitch. Strike three. But he did there with a screwball. Gary Woods is fooled by the screwball. He goes down looking. See the left hander turn it over. The ball sink. He's gone. Oh, it is right there, too. Mm -hmm. Keith, what a pit. Well, watch these men under such trying conditions. You have to have so much respect for them. Watching McGraw five times, five games out there, unafraid. Here's Terry Poole. Shot right field, base hit. Poole's fourth hit of the night. Reynolds turns and goes to third. Poole has been just amazing. Now this pitch was right there. He got a good pitch to hit, and he hits a shot by Rose. And very alertly, Dale Lunzer thinking one thing. You keep the tying run from the scoring position. Base runners are now Reynolds over at third, Poole at first, and Terry has 10 hits in the series. That's the most ever. The old record belonged to Pete Rose. You've got the tying run on first base. Enos Cabell will come to the plate and then Landestoy to hit in the number three spot where Morgan had been hitting. This is where the injuries close in on Verdon and his ability to maneuver. There is no Sedania. Up. Enos swings and misses. That's a funny swing by Enos. It looked like he was looking for the pitch out away from him, and he actually almost jammed himself with that swing. He had a funny swing at this. Look at that. that doesn't appear to be an Enos Cabell swing. Reynolds off third. Pool at first. Fouled off, strike two on Cabell. That's a big runner at third for the Houston Astros right now to pick up if they even cannot score. There's that stat we've looked at again with runners on base. Cabell has not been that effective. But still, if they got out of this inning, they could go to the ninth with only a one run deficit. Oh. Low inside, but not that much low and not that much inside. One and two. <laughs> Fast. That ball got out of the Houston bullpen. Place is uncommonly quiet. It's true of if Venus gets it. <laughs> mixture of tension, disappointment, even gloom. Mike Schmidt way down the line, back a third. Strike three. For the first time, some boo birds. What a job by McGraw. He's done a great job in getting two people like Woods 
And now Cavell on call third strike. Boy, that's when you really feel like you've been cheated when you call out and not go down swinging. Here's Landestor now with two out. Seven to five. The Phillies lead. Houston batting bottom of the eighth. The Phillies scored five times in the top of the eighth. You can't second guess Verdon for being down to Landestoy, although he's not that much of a chump with runners in scoring position. A three run lead. Landestoy buttressed the defense at second base. Morgan having played the series on one leg. To Landestoy. Strike one. Raphael took a rip. Now they give him a lot of the left field line. Sure do. He hits one over the third baseman Schmidt's head, and that's going to roll around in the corner for a while, and we're going to have a tie ball game. Because Poole at first can fly. Just outside with a screwball. That time, as the pitch was made, Greg Gross was moving more toward the line. Just so. mentioned Greg Gross. Think of the importance and the perfection of his bunt for a base hit. Now it could be Larry Boa, and he's been around long enough to give him a sign on an off-speed pitch. And that time he came with a screwball and missed, and that could have been the sign. That's what good infielders do, and what good outfielders should know. They should know what's coming. Second and he holds on. It's a seven to six ball game. Well, that's the run that I was talking about, Keith. They got to get that run at least in from third with one out. There's the line drive, just a soft line drive by Mike Schmidt. It's just astonishing to watch the guts of these players on each team fighting back against each other again and again. Well, the way this series has been, it's a shame that there has to be a loser. You've heard that in all kinds of professional athletes, all kinds of sporting events, but there's the runner. That's the tying run, Terry Poole at second. And Rafael Landestoy with excellent speed at first, and look who you got hitting. Jose Cruz. Strike on the outside corner. Knowles and Soche are still up in the Philadelphia bullpen in the bottom of the eighth inning. The Astros fighting back to get a run. Trail now by one, seven to six. You know Dallas Green wants to go with McGraw as long as he possibly can. That pitch is in the dirt. the left-hander and Dickie Knowles a right-hander they're both ready fouled off it's two and two to Cruz oh I bet he'd love to have that pitch back right up there wasn't it he had a pitch to hit and just did foul it back Joe Negro leaning out Billy Burton looking the lineup car you look at the Philly dugout they Go to nail biting time. Dallas Green walking, arms folded. There's Steve Carlton leaning out in front. Conversation between Boone and McGraw, stopping play for the moment. I think they're just trying to set up a pitch right here. They want to make sure Booney's going out there a few times with some of the pitchers tonight. They want to just make sure that. They know what each person is thinking. Just look in a human sense at McGraw's face. He's a tired man. You can read it in his face. He's pitching on guts and guts alone. 
2 2 to Cruz. Foul back. Two out. And he's the pitching tying run against second. the runs batted in leader with the tying run on second. The runs batted in leader of the team, Cruz, who has the capacity to hit left handed pitchers and who, as we have said, uses the whole ball. what it's come down to human beings the go ahead run is now at third in the person of Raphael Landeskoy another look here and Green coming out as we have the replay and Cruz just laid the bat on it and that's, dumped it in center that's all he did Keith he got it out on the end of the bat and Gary Maddox had no chance whatsoever to make a play on pool he looks he starts and said no way just give it back to the infielder and there's the tying run and now the man holding his arms up right there a tough cookie and that is Denny Walling. What a ball game. They are two weary teams now. McGraw appears to be selling himself as you see pool at the water fountain to Dallas Green and Dallas is going to leave him. He says yeah, I know he wants to stay with him as much as he can. His heart is with McGraw. You know that Dallas a tough decision to make. Do you go to the youngsters here. Do you go to the bullpen and Sochet and Knowles or do you turn around and you stay with my veteran. There's the go ahead run. Rafael Landestoy at third base and the big man at first and Jose Cruz and here's Denny Walling. Walling on the game tonight. The second base on Luzinski's error. He is single. He has scored twice. Pitch is high. Ball one. Cruz on base now. 15 of 22 times with eight walks, six hits, and a fielder's choice. Hit sharply to Boa, the shortstop. Over to second to Trio to get the force. <laughs> we have played eight innings of baseball in an incredible series between the Phillies and the Astros. And we're all tied at 7 7 going to the top of the ninth inning. Well, I think I'll just take a deep breath with you and rest. We are back here in the Houston Astrodome. Even the fans have grown weary. They're emotionally spent. You're watching maybe the most incredible championship baseball series ever played. Their emotions are stripped bare on both teams. Frank LaCorte is out on the mound for the Houston Astros. He was spectacular when he made his first appearance, pitched well when he was put into the hot kitchen, but then the very next inning he could not throw a strike. Let's see what he can do here as he is summoned by manager Billy Burton. Well, he's got another guy that he's got to lead it off with who can just be a little pain in your side all the time and a great battler Larry Boa to lead it off Keith. Boa Boone and Gross they proved in the bottom of the eighth they were not easy because it was Boa who singled Boone singled off Ryan's glove and Gross bun it perfectly and that started the very go round for the Phillies when they scored five. Houston bullpen, the young right-hander who has pitched brilliantly in the series. Boa in the ball game, one for three. The pitch 
which is eye high to Larry as uh, Ruthven is back in the Philadelphia bullpen. Dick Ruthven, a starter. On the corner, one and one. Those are the scores you can see. Three games have already gone to extra innings. This one could. Fouled off, one and two. Dunn's trying to figure out, along with Steve Zabriskie, which clubhouse to go to for the winning celebration. There may not be one. <laughs> the way they're going, there might not. Well, we know there's got to be. A 7 7 ties. Boa loops it into left field. Cruz coming as hard as he can, can't get it. Boxes it around and holds Boa at first base. And the pesky hitter is on one more time. That well, Larry Boa, he doesn't hit it too far, but he's got perfect position on it. Just a little chip shot out into left field. Cruz was playing fairly shallow, but the ball slicing and dying in a hurry. Cruz had ideas to come on to try and shoestring it, but there was no way. Now, once it hits, he's got to make sure that that ball doesn't get by him. And what hustling backup play by Poole in center field. Bob Boone bunts the ball down the first baseline. Bergman picks it up, goes to Landestor, the sacrifice moving. Boa over to second, Gross coming up. Contribution of Gross going back to that bunt in the five run Philly eighth, simply enormous. Well, you've got it all on the line here in the ninth inning in a 7 7 tie. You've got Gross, but then after him, look who you've got down in the on deck circle. Pete Rose. There he is. It's the gross snaps in for a strike. I suppose if there's a man down there who has some inexhaustible resource to draw upon and is not tired, it would be Pete Rose. <laughs> he never gets tired. Fouled off. Strike two. You know the thing, Howard. It's not so much that you're going out. It's not the physical tiredness that you're talking about. It's the mental strain. Yeah. You're just concentration drained. breaks. We saw it last night. Mental Several. lapses. You've got to try and kick yourself and make yourself up for every pitch. Then you might drop a little bit. You got to kick yourself again. Your mind will wander. You got to say, "Wait a minute, what's going on?" A struggle. That's what's going on. Sharply, first baseman Berkman has it. Make the play himself. Two out as Boa moves over to third. And here he is. That ball was hit hard. Bergman moving just a little bit to his right, staying with it. That ball might almost might have got by him. But he stays right with it, gets it in the glove, loses his balance, and then very alertly, he'll go to the bag and do it himself. I think they'll walk Pete Rose here, don't you? It appears that yes. that's what they're going to do. And they'll have the pitcher spot. And that's Vukovic coming out on deck, I believe. So that'll do McGraw, and he'll be leaving. Be George Vukovic. Moving out. Well, that's, that's something that Bill Verdon, he... He's watched this guy too many times for so many years. He doesn't like to intentionally walk people. He just doesn't really believe in that all the time. But he's got enough respect for Pete Rose. He says, by golly, you're not going to beat me. <laughs> Again. Yeah. <laughs> so Rose is on first, and it brings up George Vukovic, who's 0 for 2 in his two trips to the plate in the championship series. Spot for this youngster. Smith in the pen, back of LaCorte. Ruthven has now quit throwing on the Philadelphia side. Sochet, Knowles, Ruthven in and out of there. So here comes the 24 year old rookie, George Vukovic. That's Mike Schmidt standing in the on deck circle. 
If something happens, he would follow Hoki. There's Larry Boa at third. There's Pete Rose at first. Two out. A 7 7 ball game. Crowd coming up. They've been up and down since the second inning. And LaCordy wheels it home high. When the Phillies scored five, their dugout was Bedlam. And when the Astros came back with two to tie, their side was a pretty happy place. Two balls and no strikes now as LaCordy wanders a bit on Bukovic. We have seen an ebb and flow <laughs> for four days. Just an elevator of emotion. Vukovic has some room in left center. He also has the lines sort of bunched on him in the middle. Three and one now as Lacordia's getting in the same kind of a fix he got into the other night in Philadelphia. Oh, it's baseball is so ironic. Who would believe that a pennant might come down to two fellas named Lacordi and Vukovic? <laughs> That's fouled off, and it's a full count now, three and two. Three and two, two out, two on. Boa at third, Rose at first. The full count offering to the batter. Foul ball to the right side. I'll tell you, there's a little gutsy call right there. Three and two breaking pitch. Here's a man that LaCordy wants right here. He does not want to go to Mike Schmidt. I don't care what kind of a series he's had. Man is too good a ball player to keep putting him to the test all the time. Ground of the shortstop Reynolds. Throw to first base in time. So the Phillies get Larry Boa as far as third. Cannot push him across. We'll have the bottom of the ninth inning in this fifth championship game after this commercial and a word from our local station. Dick Ruthven has come out to pitch the top of the, uh, the bottom of the ninth inning against the Houston Astros. He started game two. Well, this is a solid pitcher. Frankly, I wondered why it wasn't in earlier. Dave Berkman is up the first baseman, takes a strike. But he's got to be careful with this kid, Keith. We mentioned the other day his whole background as a hitter, his power. That's low to him. Alan Ashby will follow, then Craig Reynolds. Sharply hit. Trio had him played just right. One out. who hit a single back in the sixth inning to knock a run home. That was years ago. Seems like it. We're talking about last Monday while ago. I can't even remember. <laughs> Change 
misses. Took a little off the breaking pitch and it dropped inside. On the ground to the second baseman trio, two out. When these two teams play, it's not a nine inning game. <laughs> That's not in their repertoire, Howard. Nope. They want you to get a full night's work in or a full afternoon's work in. Now Craig Reynolds, the shortstop. It's a remarkable display of two teams who have blended themselves together under leadership and who have about as much determination, as much spirit, as much competitiveness as you'll ever see in sport. Ruthven to Reynolds. Fly ball straight away center for Maddox. So Ruthven comes in and very calmly and very quickly retires the Astros in order. And so for the fourth time, in this five game series we'll go extra innings we're even at seven seven. I look down from the top of the Astrodome in a seven seven ball game we're going to the top of the tenth inning. LaCorte is out now to pitch to Mike Schmidt. Then it'll be Unser and Trio. Cordy is in with a strike for Schmidt. Now, Philadelphia, the bench is down to one hitter, John Vukovic, and four pitchers. Houston has three hitters left as possibilities and five pitchers. Strike two. Obviously, you guard the line at this juncture. Both Cabell and Bergman. Don't want the ball rolling down in a corner. That's extra base. Two strikes on Mike Schmidt. Struck him out. <laughs> Nolan Ryan struck him out in the third. Zambito struck him out in the eighth. And LaCordia has struck him out here in the tenth. Have you ever, Don, in all your years in baseball, seen anything like this? No, I never have. I think right there that Mike telling him where the pitch was. You might select a single game to match any single game in this series, but sustainedly, four such games as we have had, no. Down the line to the corner by Unser. Unser around second, the ball comes in, and he stands there with a double. So that's twice, Dell Unser. A reserve has done it. And you know, there we look at it again. There's a shot, and it comes up off of the dirt to Bergman, goes over his glove, and now it's a good play for the right fielder to move over. And that's Woods to make the play. But you know it's funny when we got out here to the ballpark very early this afternoon as you look at Dell Unser Dell was taking a batting tee with a batting coat with a uh, coach Billy DeMars going back underneath the stands and just working on something and how that could have paid off tonight a key base hit and now the double and trio is up and he's been trouble. Irv just misses. The outfield is Cruz, Poole, and Woods now with Walling out. Well, as Don said, the last time Trio was up, they have not changed their pitching pattern on him. And since they have not been successful against him, you'd think they would. Now he's gone to the breaking pit. Yep. He missed with a curve and he hits a good location with a curve. And it's one and one. Smith going back to the bullpen for Houston. The ball is hit into center field, hit a long way. Terry Poole after it, going way back. One hands it deep. Runner tags, moves to third. Unser over to third, two out. Well, that's a heads up play by Dell Unser. If that ball goes by, he's going to score anyway. 
Trio another fastball and he hits it well Terry Poole with that excellent speed he covers a lot of ground to go back there to haul that one down now Unser is tagged and he goes to third with ease it gets by the first cutoff man Reynolds but backed up very alertly by the second man the trailer that was Rafael Landis after the way Kansas City used that the other day a lot of teams are going to practice it. Nothing wrong with that. Now they're going to say an appeal at second base. They say no. Second base umpire Bob Engel made the call. I was watching him, and I didn't. I was pretty sure he didn't leave. No, he went back there in plenty of time, Keith. He started just a little ways, and then he went back. He saw where the ball was going to go, and he knew that Poole was going to catch it. That ball carried rather better than balls hit to right and left. No question, the ball carries better to center field in here That's than right. any place else. Maddox is the batter. Gary swings, it's a base hit. Poole overruns it. Run scores from third, Unser. To give Philadelphia the lead, eight to seven in the top of the 10. Poole made a great try at it. He almost came up with it, then overran it a little bit. Maddox goes on in the second. For a single game, I guess for sustained response to pressure. Let's watch it again. He drops from the side. He throws the fastball from the side, and Gary Maddox is laying right on it. Poole comes in, makes an excellent effort, a great attempt. Just could not make the play on the ball that was sinking too fast. I guess for sustained response to pressure and excitement. That's the second baseman, Landis Doy. The 75 World Series was the best, but I don't think it had what this series has had. So the Phillies fight back, lead 8 7. We'll go to the bottom of the 10th after this word from our local station. In the bottom of the 10th inning, with Philadelphia leading 8 7, it is Gary Woods, Terry Poole, Enos Cabell. And then it would be Rafael Landestor. And these three men face a tough, prepared veteran pitcher. How many times can a team come back? I talked about sustained response to pressure in that marvelous World Series of 75. For single games, we've got a pinch hitter. We've got a pinch hitter now. Heap comes to That's the plate. Heap. Danny Heap. It'll be his first appearance. I saw Jackie Robinson Keith play the most remarkable game you'd ever want to see. As the Dodgers rallied back to tie the Phils in the final game of the season. And then Jackie won it with an extra inning home run. And of course, there was October 3rd, 1951, when Bobby Thompson hit the home run in his greater comeback. So there have been individual games, but none for the sustained four games we have had. Danny Heap is up there now, 276, the Astro first baseman of the future, some people say. 87 at bats, a 276 average, and Dick Lutheran misses for ball one. Five games in all, but I wouldn't like in the first game to the next four. Harry Poole is on deck. Ruthven on the mound, trying to win it for Philadelphia. On the outside corner, one and one. His way to the locker room. Whichever team should win it. Steve Zabriski is with us as well. Outside. Two balls and two strikes to Dan Heap. Hits the ball in the air on the left side in play. Boa goes back, calls for it, and makes the catch. One out. The Phillies only need two outs to win their third National League pennant. They won the first one in 1915. They lost in the series to the Red Sox. They won the second in 1950. They lost in the series to the Yankees. The batter is Terry Poole, who has been an absolutely remarkable athlete 
throughout this championship series. That's what he's done tonight. He has 10 hits in the series. That's a new record for a championship series. Strokes it to center, hits it deep. Maddox going back, going back. Gets it. it down the right side foul. It is not a home run part. The long ball is not so much a factor here. But it was a pair of doubles in the top of the ten by Unser and by Maddox that produced the eighth run, the lead run, and possibly the winning run for the Phillies. He was gone. Nope. How many times? We couldn't count them on all fingers of both hands that we have faced this three and two. They appealed it. They got the call down the right side. Three, two. He hits it to right center field. Maddox going. It's over. The Phillies win it. Eight to seven. So they are not the same old Phillies. They are the 1980 Phillies. They did it as hard a way as it has ever been done. They did it with a controversial manager, openly disliked by many of his players, but they did it. And they did it because somewhere within them, there was a spirit that would not be quelled. And the disappointment that you see, the gloom in that Houston dugout, so understandable because they had been so great. That's Gary Maddox that they're carrying along there. He had a great championship series. He and made the final out. Our congratulations to them. And the most valuable player has been named Manny Trio. I think he deserves it. Early on in this ball game, he assumed the dominant role. A fine play in the very first inning to end the inning on Denny Wallen. A remarkable throw home to catch Pujols. This is the Philadelphia locker room. That 
we will now take you into. There will be a waiting period under baseball's rules. Dallas Green exulted in victory. The final score in game five, Philadelphia eight, Houston seven. Stay with us now for live interviews from the locker room. The executive producer of ABC Sports is Rune Arledge. Coverage of the National League Championship Series was produced by Dennis Lewin. Directed by Joe Assetti. Our technical director, Joe Nisi. Associate director, Ned Simon. Technical manager, Scott Hunter. Unit manager, Phil Annis. Traffic manager, Hal Schmidt. Research, Jerry Klein, Steve Hurt. The championship series of the National League has been brought to you by Chevrolet and your Chevy dealer with Chevette Monza Citation and the new Monte Carlo. Chevy's up ahead for 1981. And by Light Beer, everything you always wanted in a beer and less. Travel arrangements made through and promotional fee paid by United Airlines. United flies more people to Hawaii than any other airline. That's what Friendly Skies are all about. Stay tuned for live interviews from the locker room after this message from our local station. The shock, the pain of defeat reflected there as Jose Cruz sits alone, literally, in the Houston dugout. Tears were running down his cheeks a moment ago, stunned after he had given everything just like he and all of his teammates their last ounce of energy the fight all the way and they were one run short on the other side there is joy a plenty and here's Don Drysdale right in the middle of it all right Keith well Dallas Green I'll tell you one thing as I have my hand around you you're pumping like I don't know like an old well down here in Texas but congratulations thank you Donnie we I'll tell you it just didn't look like it was in the cards but we we kept battling and I you know I started out in spring training talking about the character of this ball club and I felt that we needed some character to win and I'll tell you this last month and in particular this last five days we've shown so much character I don't know where to even start but you got to be so happy with the guys because you've been down you've had your backs to the wall and somewhere you found a reserve it's unbelievable it is unbelievable and you know the the, the guys came through the the answers the Maddoxes uh, the guys that have have helped us all the way through have really come through for us Dick Ruthven just did an outstanding job coming in here <laughs> here's Larry Ball Larry come on over here I know one thing thank you Dallas thank you. Larry you've been on you've had been on winners but have you ever seen anything like this you never quit I tell you what I dreamed of this since I'm five years old I swear to God I did and I didn't know how I'd act but it's the greatest feeling in the world it's unbelievable. I never thought I'd get this keyed up, but we battled. We battled the heck out of them. They got a good ball club. Terry Poole is unbelievable. What does your stomach feel like right now? I can't describe it. I tell you what, I, I, it's unbelievable, Don. I swear. Okay. I can't believe it. You got a guy over here. Listen, I'll let you go down. Right. Thank you, Larry. Thank you. Pete Rose. Pete, I tell you, you know you've been on winners before. Have you ever seen a ball club with their backs to the wall? You're down to the nine count, but you keep coming back. Well, especially on the road, too, Don. And we've been doing that for the last month and a half. And Unser and Gross, that one inning, he got a key hit after Schmidt struck out. And, and Gross made a great bunt. And Maddox got a key hit. Trio got a, a key triple. It's just a team effort. And, uh, I couldn't be any happier I am right now because uh, it was a real dog fight. Greg Luzinski told me in the clubhouse, he said, Pete Rose will not let us quit. He says nobody can quit. He's wow. in there in that dugout. I was a little disappointed when they scored and went ahead, and they scored another run on a wild pitch, and Hal got another uh, uh, run with a triple because, you know, I felt we still could win him. We was only one down, but we let him get three ahead, and fortunately we came back and scored five, which is very unusual, you know, because they got a good pitching staff. But uh, these guys didn't say they didn't quit, and... Uh, the, the fans of Philadelphia have just been great supporting us all year. I'm more happy for them than I am for myself and my teammates because they, they've been so close so many years and they support the ball club as good as anybody, uh, them and the Dodgers, the Dodger fans, and I'm just happy the World Series is going to be played in Philadelphia. Well, Pete, congratulations and good luck in the series. Thank you very much. Okay, right now we're going to go to Steve Zabriskie with Terry Poole, and that will come up right after this word. No, right now. Let's go over there right now. Thank you, Don. And obviously, a contrasting locker room, one of great sobriety here. Terry Poole, who had an outstanding series, was just superb. But, Terry, I know that you're greatly disappointed, particularly considering the way the Astros battled back all year 
just to get to this final game. That's true. Uh, nothing has come easy for the Astros uh, all season long. We've been struggling. We're, this team's got a lot of character, and uh, we're going to be back again uh, maybe come next year. What kinds of things do you think made the difference as far as Philadelphia being able to pull it out, particularly in this final game? Uh, as a case, well, uh, they were down 5-2 in the bottom of the seventh inning, I believe, and they came roaring back, and they had loaded bases and nobody out with, you know, within minutes. You know, it's it a case where everything, you know, anything they hit was, uh, was a base hit, and then uh, they rose to the occasion. That's all I can say. They're a fine ball club, and I just take my hat off to them. How much of an effect do you think the injuries had on your team, the people that you lost, particularly in this final series? Uh, well, losing Cesar to start with was a, a big key. Uh, Cesar has, you know, played with us all season long. He was a mo main cog in our wheel, and uh, you know, it's a, you know, you can't afford to lose players like that. But that's not an excuse. Uh, we, we played hard. We, you know, they just came up and they they beat us. That's all there's to it. I'm sure that you're gratified by the way the crowd responded. It really must have helped you in these final three games, especially. Our fans have been just a uh, tremendous. You know, it's a really turn around this uh, city towards baseball and. Uh, uh, that's the case. We're going to be back next year, and uh, I'm sure they're going to be back with us. All right, Terry, thank you, and congratulations again on a great series. Thank you very much. All right, let's go back now to the Philly locker room and Don Drysdale. All right, Steve, thank you very much. Well, you've got a guy right here who is just tickled pink. Tuck McGraw. Tucker, I think you're going to go back tonight and check your birth certificate. I know you've got to be a little tired. <laughs> well, you know, Don, I tell you, I, I, I thought I'd be able to do it, but... Um, I just I didn't have the um, the crisp the crispness or the sharpness on the breaking ball and and that's what they ended up dropping in there on me. I, they're good hitters and if you don't go out there with your best stuff they're going to get you and that's what they did. But I was really glad to get out of the inning and I'm and I'm glad Rufus came in and he was there when we needed him. It took everything every ounce of everything we had as a team to do it and we fought back and did it. I'm proud of our guys. Can you compare this club to the Mets. Not right now. I don't think so. This this series had had too much excitement and uh, it the, the Mets was exciting but this is a totally different kind of thing I think now how long is going to take you to be ready for the series well we've got we've got a day and a half I guess <laughs> <laughs> I'm not worried about my arm I'm worried about the headache I'm going to have <laughs> <laughs> listen you deserve it you did had a great year and congratulations and I wish I wish to say hello to my dad and my oh my wife's here and uh, my uncle Ted and my grandma and the kids and and Randy Lurch I wish you were here well, that's true. Right now, we're going to move around and risk it. Mike Schmidt up here. Michael, come on up here, Mike. Mike, I'd say, well, congratulations. You battle them all the way, pal. And I know that wasn't the kind of series you had, but that's in the books right now. You've got the big one to look forward to. Thanks a lot. Uh, I tell you. Come on, all right. <laughs> get this man. All this right. is this is obviously the best feeling yeah, I've ever Rick, had. Stay here. I know I was some dead weight out there in that game today, Don. Some real dead weight, and uh, that proves uh, what, what kind of heart this team has. I didn't do anything, and it got picked up every time I, I didn't execute at the plate. And uh, I tell you, I saw some things out there I really couldn't believe today by this team. Down three runs, score five. They come back, tie it up. We finally score again. And I sat there and watched the whole thing. <laughs> well, Greg Lazinski, you had two big shots. You won two ball games. You only have to win three, but sometimes I didn't know if there was ever going to be a third game that was going to be won. I wasn't worried about the first two shots because they were history. It happened in Philadelphia on that fly ball Manny Mota hit, and when that, when that ball went in the gap, and I had the error, and they come back and tied it. I said, oh, Christ, here we go again. <laughs> but the guys picked me up. Well, you know, the, the biggest thing is that I can't believe the heart, the comeback. This club never did give up. I tell you, you know, all the way down the stretch, we we were we had a it was unbelievable. We had a 13 inning game against uh, a 15 inning game against the Cubs, and down three in the bottom of the ninth. Excuse me, down two in the bottom of the ninth. Had to win all four games from the Cubs at that point, and came back. And uh, again, Gary Maddox uh, got the single to tie it with two outs. And Manny Trio got the base hit to win it. And you saw Manny Trio. You, you you'll never see a better ball game played by Manny Trio than you saw out there today. And uh, and I got to give the Astros a hell of a lot of credit, especially Terry Poole. I saw more poise out of Terry Poole out there. Hitting that baseball today, and Nolan Ryan pitched a great ball game. And uh, like I said, I sat back and watched the whole thing. And uh, I'll just say one thing George, see you in Philadelphia. <laughs> well, Bull, listen, you two guys, I know you're still the big kingpins of this ball club. Have a good time, celebrate well, congratulations. All right, Don, thank you. Okay, and uh, right now, of course, Manny Trio, they met you heard Mike mention Manny Trio. He's the most valuable player this championship series. And right now, let's go back upstairs to Keith Jackson. All right, Don, thank you very much. And we'll have a closing comment from Howard Cosell, and then we'll leave the Houston Astrodome. Howard? Very quickly, 
putting it in perspective, it was what we said it was, one of the greatest championship series ever played and probably ever to be played. Dallas Grain's use of the word character is, I think, absolutely appropriate. Both teams showed character, tremendous amounts of it, but the Phillies, a beleaguered team in terms of their competitiveness and spirit through the media people through the years, have answered back and have represented the city of Philadelphia enormously well. They deserve everyone's congratulations. So to Bill Verdon, the Houston organization too. Both teams bode well for the future of baseball as they have exemplified in this series, I think just remarkable skill, ability, and competitiveness. Now here is the awarding of the MVP trophy in the Philadelphia locker room. And with me, the president of the National League, Chubb Feeney, the winner of the most valuable player, Manny Trio. Manny, number one, congratulations, and Chubb, it's all yours. Well, thank you, Manny. Congratulations on being the MVP of probably the greatest series ever played. Oh, thank you. And you and the nice going. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Baseball thank magazine. Thank you, sir. Manny, just keep it going. I know this has got to probably be the highlight of your career. Yeah, it really is. I mean, uh, I know I've been thrown out twice to go to the Wall Series with the Oakland A's, and uh, I really was looking for this one. And now I've been uh, feeling more great right now because I know I'm going to be playing every day. Well, you just keep yourself in shape. Enjoy it. Good luck in the series. All right. Thank you. Right. OK, let's go back upstairs once again to Keith Jackson. Thank you, Don. And when one team leads and wins and celebrates, the other team sits in somber quiet and suffers in the agony of defeat. It is done. The Philadelphia Phillies beat Houston 8-7 for the right to play Kansas City in the World Series.